Consensus Network. If your money is really simplified, then it makes everything else way simpler because it's so high up the food chain in terms of thought priorities or any mental cognizant decision I've got to make is going to be filtered by money. Do I have enough of it? Can I go to this place? Can I eat at that restaurant? Can I do this thing? Money, money, money. And so because it's this great filter, it means once you take care of it or you don't have a melting money supply, it means that you can just get to work on actually more meaningful things. And your brain sort of partitions it and says, okay, Bitcoin makes me sleep at night because I have full control over that. I reckon the whole world is going to slow down to 10 minutes and we're going to use, instead of talking time, we're just going to talk block heights. You know, you see people talking about it now, we're going to slow down, time will not exist and it'll be all block heights because the most secure thing in the world is going to be the block hide. That's the most assured thing that you and me anywhere on earth can agree on right now. Welcome back to the Freedom Footprint Show, a Bitcoin philosophy show with Knut Svanholm and me, Luke the Pseudofin. Today's guest is Michael Dunworth, who you might know from his famous time locking experiment. This is one of the most bullish and energetic episodes we've ever had from the kilo price of a Bitcoin to the SATS bits debate, the role of Bitcoin in cryptography, the limitations of AI, and of course, time locking. But before we dive in, we'd like to quickly remind you that the best way to support the show is to send us a boost or stream us some SATS using a value-for-value value podcasting app such as Fountain. If you're listening to this show as a podcast, check it out on Fountain. You can earn sats from listening, and you can support us and all your other favorite shows. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe to the Consensus Network channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Also on the channel now is Once Bitten with Daniel Prince, so check that out too. And finally, we want to thank today's sponsors, Wasabi Wallet, Orange Pill App, and BitcoinBook.shop. All their information is in the description, and we'll be talking a little more about them later. And now, without further ado, here is Michael Dunworth on the Freedom Footprint Show. Michael, welcome to the Freedom Footprint Show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah. Good to see you again. We met in, oh, what a beautiful t-shirt. Yes. Yep. <laughs> no, it's great to see you again. It was nice seeing you when you were here in Australia for Bitcoin Alive. Yes, big shout out to the Bitcoin Alive guys. I mean, uh, fantastic event. Uh, I felt like a complete rock star there for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to coming again next year. Yeah, well, you better be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I will if I can bring Luke. <laughs> That's what I was saying before. He definitely he's got to, he's got to get he's got to get a ticket on it. He's got a hundred percent come. Yeah, yeah. That was good. I'll do my best. <laughs> and Michael, you're you're the brother of our dear friend Peter Dunworth, who's been on the show before. And yep. we we did a panel together in Australia. You and me and Izzy, yes, uh, the CEO of Amber App. And yes, that that's it. right. Yeah, it was one of the funniest talks I've ever, uh, uh, funniest panels I've ever been on, and uh, a great one, I think. As I'm, that I'm was still a looking... barn burner. I can't wait for the footage to come out. <laughs> no, me neither, and I've been waiting for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, they started to release talks from from that event, and uh, mm. yes. But Bitcoin Prague is faster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's all uh, it's all a process. You got to get used to it. So they're an inaugural event. I'm sure they're ironing ironing it all out. So how you been? What you been up to since uh, since we last met? Oof. Oppenheimer, talk to me. Have you seen it? I have seen it. Uh, I thought it was right. absolutely awesome. You know what I tell you? Let me tell you something, Canute. I reckon you're going to get behind this. Okay, you know how they've done the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I reckon they need to do the actual universe. So Alan Turing with the imitation game, I thought that was fantastic. Oppenheimer I thought was fantastic. I'm sure there's someone's got to do a mad Tesla movie at some point. But, you know, you could do the whole scroll. Einstein, Archimedes, you know, there's a whole whole world of people we could do. But anyway, yeah, I loved Oppenheimer. I thought it was fantastic. 
yeah, yeah, I, I loved it too. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I mean, I'm. I have mixed feelings about uh, Christopher Nolan as a director. I think he has. Yeah. He's obviously very talented, and he has his. But he also has his flaws. Like, uh, and so, so, so I thought the the pacing of the movie was a bit off at at times. It's kind of hard mm. to follow, and some of these. Mm. Uh, intricacies time time jumpy things and like black and white is subjective but you don't really know what it's supposed to do felt a little yep. like that it didn't add that much to the over overarching story but was more like convoluted for the sake of being convoluted uh, but yeah. other than, but other than that i thought the performances were absolutely amazing mm. um and uh yeah um uh, overall, a very solid movie, and I, I like that movies like that can have a good run at the box office because it gives me yeah. hope that it's not only you know the MCU and uh, you know yeah. the, the death of Disney that uh, that's playing the, the slow suicide. It could the slow. Uh, oh, what's the what's the word? It's uh, being poisoned. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> the fran- franchise. It's be it's committing a slow self franchise uh, that we're it's all. Not, yeah, it's death by a thousand paper cuts, but it's giving itself yeah. the paper cuts. Or death by a, a thousand strong female leads. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's mostly what it is. There's like this uber powered woman that doesn't have to do shit in order to. Uh, to get her powers. I, I feel like Disney's had a whole bunch of misses lately. Like, I mean, basically they've sort of backed into a corner and they've totally duffed it now. Um, but now it's like, it's good if you, if Oppenheimer does really well at the box office, that means people are going to be like, oh shit, there's a market yeah. for this. And so people are going to start yeah. making more movies or be, a, you know, the next director that wants to make a movie about someone historical, they're getting, be able to get a hundred million for it, which is good. Yeah. And it's yeah. refreshingly devoid of of uh, identity politics. I mean, it's somewhat political. I mean, Oppenheimer had some association with the Communist Party and everything. I and was it's interested. All real political, not yeah, yeah, it, politics. You know, it's it, like this no. is the hardcore stuff. Like this was real stuff, not this sort of imaginary stuff. Uh, that we yeah, and have it's in. and it doesn't take us. It, it doesn't judge. It doesn't even take a side on if the atomic bomb was a good thing or not. It's it's uh, yeah. You you'll have to figure it out by yourself that it's yeah. kind of stupid to blow people up, but yeah, <laughs> it is quite stupid. Surprisingly, we got to remind ourselves of that. So, is the discovery of uh, was Satoshi's discovery of Bitcoin an event of the same magnitude as uh, Oppenheimer's uh, discovery I'll tell, of I'll tell the you what it was. I'll tell you what it was. The white paper was the ripple on the oscillating stethoscope or whatever it was that was testing the uranium splitting. You remember how he go? He basically they go, "Oh my god, they split the atom or whatever," and he's like, "Bullshit, yeah. that can't happen." Here's the yeah. mass, and they go, "No, no, I did it next door. Watch." And you see on the little screen like the scribble yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yep. I'd say that's like the white paper get getting uploaded to the internet. So if we're looking at the whole internet, there'd be a little flash when that bit of data got uploaded to the internet. And that would you know, kind of be the the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. I think that'd be uh, close close to something like that. Satoshi's in that 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 little of position, though. I I think just measuring pound for pound, you could actually do it pretty easily. You could measure who's more important, Satoshi or Oppenheimer, and you could measure it by the amount of energy that's been displaced. So we could basically measure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's fantastic. I've been thinking about the, uh, along the same lines. It's like he the, the the Bitcoin is sort of the inverse of the atomic bomb because yes. it's a, a weapon of mass construction and not destruction. Like it's yes. in, so it's yep. it's the peaceful equivalent. Is this one divided by atomic bombs? <laughs> <laughs> one divided by atomic bombs. Well, that's the thing, right? If you want to, me- if you measure it by the amount of energy that's being displaced, like physical energy, yeah. you could probably get to a number that quantifies both of them. Like you've got enough nuclear warheads that's affected, you know, millions or tens of millions of people. So maybe they're further ahead right now. But in the future, if you know, I, I think about it like Einstein and people like that. They're startup founders. Like Einstein's equation, E equals MC squared. It's got 8 billion people that adopt it because everyone on earth has to adopt that equation because it's part of physics. And so if you think of that as like, he's also a founder, just like Satoshi. Like I put them in that category where they're sort of like, you know, Jesus Christ. I mean, you're not the religious type, but 
whether we like it or not, his name is in the date every time, you know, BC, AD or BC kind of thing. What is it? Yeah. Is it AD or BC? Uh, B, B, uh, uh, Domini, like after uh, no, Dominic, like Yeah, yeah. But these sort, sort of people BC that are these massive yeah. things that are like, you know, they're not trying to, you know, they're not trying to get rich and famous. They're more like trying to get a street named after them or a country yeah, named yeah. after them. And so I, think, I think it's cool. I love that level of grandeur in terms of the person yeah. because to get to that level, it takes this possession, just obsess, sorry, like an absolute obsession. So you know that like when people are sort of pouring that much brain juice on a topic, you're like, all right, yeah. shit, this dude must know what he's talking about. This Jesus dude will probably live on in our memories for a couple of more hundred hundred years more. But yeah. we all know that the real year zero was two thousand and nine in terms of Jesus years. You know that's that's it. So yeah, he <laughs> came. He came. And what was it? January seventh or? But yeah, he <laughs> came. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what's funny though? People people bag me out for saying this about it being religious-like. And I really think it's true because if you, like, you're not religious per se, let's say, and I am I would say I'm a bit maybe more religious. I'm still quite scientific, but I think like religion is just like a set, of, it's like a protocol, right? Like a set of values that you adhere to, just sort of like a set of rules that we have like for a chain or for a money. Like, do you know what I mean? Ish? Yes, but but I would I, the the thing you just described I would mm. call a philosophy and not a religion because a religion sort ah. of Im- implies that you believe in something that is not provable. Uh, so I would categorize uh, democracy uh, as a religion, for in- instance, and statism <laughs> as like probably the worst yes. religion of them all. But if right. you could just remove that, oh, I also am completely bonkers and believe all this horse shit uh, um, f- from the religious equation that it was just a set of values, then it would be fine. Yes. But yep. but the thing I don't like is all the bullshittery that seems to be like embedded in everything we do. Anyway, yeah. I I use the, uh, speaking of Einstein, I use that equation yeah. in the book uh, to calculate the, the, the kilo price of a Bitcoin. And in, in doing so, I just I, I, I took the the total amount of energy used uh, since mm. Bitcoin's inception, mm. uh, uh, which was total I, line, I total believe points produced, and uh, yeah, divided by total or, or yes, put it into yeah. the equation there, and uh, yeah. the price per kilo were, was pretty high, a couple of trillion dollars, I believe, and I think I the, remember this. I remember this. So yeah. when you're treating it like a precious metal. Yeah, what is like it? element zero, metal. like yeah. element zero, uh, yeah. the informational yeah. element. And since energy and mass are the same two sides of the same coin, pun intended, yeah. uh, then you can just convert <laughs> it like that. And funny thing is that last year in Riga, Adam Back confronted me about this because he heard about it and he had used a completely different equation to come up with mm. approximately the same the same value per Going kilo. Same because, sort of, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember his method, but I need to talk to him about that again. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. we're doing the interview later, right, Luke? So we're we're uh, we're, we're we will ask him about it. But the thing is, I yeah, okay. I think I, I think the number was something like thirty-seven petajoules or whatever. Mm. What, what's the? Uh, you're a better physicist than I am. Oh, like no, it'd be well. It would be what was your? Let's look it up. Hold on. It's a, a for lack of a better word, a, a, a fuck ton of energy, and maybe oh, it's, Oppenheimer it's only used a shitload, and Bitcoin uses a fuck ton, and a fuck ton is obviously bigger than a shitload. So I think a shitload is yeah. A fuck ton is a lot of shitloads. Yeah. Uh, Many well, shitloads. Uh, this is another debate I had with my brother, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of brothers. Um, yeah. About well, what's the bigger number, a fuck ton, a shitload, or even a fuck ton, or, or a fuck load? Uh, I, I don't know. Shitload. I think a, a lot- fuck ton's always the, the heaviest. Yeah, it always feels probably, the heaviest. Right? Yeah, feels yeah, heavier. Feels yeah. the heaviest. So, so I was looking at, I was working with this videographer, so talking about energy consumption in Bitcoin, and I was talking about, I was looking at, let's imagine the pyramids were sort of condensed energy, like how much energy took to move all these stones. So you're right, you approximate how many stones they moved and how far they moved them. Anyway, and you get this pile of basically, you know, you get the pyramids, right? How big they are. I was trying to work out if you took the same method and practice and you took all the energy gone into the Bitcoin network, how big it would be. 
And the initial number, we're doing a video on it at the moment, but it's gone like past the moon and like I've sent it to someone to review. So it's like the earth is there. This pyramid is like out to here. Like it's like basically the earth shrunk to nothing. And I'm like, something mustn't be right. And I sent it to a couple of people and some of people said, surely that can't be right. And I'm like, I think it is. But anyway, so refining that, but it's this gargantuan amount. Like if we looked at it like it was a building or something, it would be this mega structure of like just human like engineering prowess. Like it's really sick, but I don't know. At the moment, it just lives digitally and it's imaginary and yeah, I'm no, still not sure if it's real or not. That <laughs> sounds like it sounds like something our friend Greg Foss would call a rounding error <laughs> somewhere. Yes, yes. <laughs> Literally, though, that's a, like, is it too many zeros on the size of this thing? But it is like, isn't it fascinating? He, you know, here's something. I was trying to think about why Bitcoin feels so purposeful, right? So you think like with, when you're using Bitcoin, it sort of sharpens all the bullshit in your brain. Like, it, sorry, it, it grinds away all the bullshit in your brain. Like it's smoothing out a bowling ball almost. Yeah. Like let's say your brain's really smooth. Yeah. It's hiding out all the bullshit that Fiat sort of put on it. No, oh, the Fiat, oh, purpose. That's right. <laughs> if you think about, okay, purpose. Application. So let's think of what a Bitcoin miner is. Firstly, you know these motivational videos, and they all say, you know, okay, if you keep failing, just keep trying again. Bitcoin miner is the perfect example of that. They fail more times in 10 minutes than any other person on the planet trying to do anything. So you think all they are is a trial and error machine. So we think about that yeah. and it's like, okay, that's quite purposeful. And then you think about what machines they're using. These things are literally called purpose machines. Application specific integrated circuit. It can only yep. do one thing really well. And so yeah. there's sort of this, this modularity in every piece of this puzzle that sort of Satoshi's assembled. Um, I don't know. It just feels very purposeful. And now I feel because I keep looking at Bitcoin and it feels like it's changing my consciousness and it's changing my mentality on things. And I don't know. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Part of my language, but it's sort of hypnotizing me a bit. And I'm trying to figure out why. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have the exact same experience, and it's it's <laughs> it's making me re- reevaluate everything. Everything I I thought I knew, like it. Yes, it, you just have to do this, like reverse that and see it through this follow the money lens uh, and yes. more probabilistic lens, if you will. Yeah, and and uh, you come to different conclusions. However, uh, uh, I've changed my mind on religion slightly. But Go Bitcoin certainly certainly hasn't made me more religious in the sense that I believe in higher powers now. The, rather, the mm. opposite. I, uh, it's it, to me, Bitcoin has pointed out very clearly that the the scarcity of a human life is what gives it value, and why mm-hmm. we do stuff at all. If we could live forever, yes. an omnipotent being that could live forever and was indestructible mm. wouldn't yep. wouldn't have the incentive to do it. Fuck all uh, Th- at any it. time. Yep. Yeah. I should stop yeah, cursing, by the way, so we don't get banned. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. But you can't, that's the thing. You've got to have, if there was no finish line, that's why people say if you give a job to a busy person, if you want a job done, give it to a busy person. Because a busy person's always busy and their cadence is always being busy. So when you give it to someone that's stationary and not used to doing lots of things, it becomes this big, overwhelming, you know, juggernaut of a task. But when you give it to someone that's already zoning and they're just chewing through tasks on their task list, like it's going out of fashion, you just throw, oh, pay this bill for me or whatever it is. Like you add the admin to their list or something like that. Not that you do that, but you know, hypothetically, um, that's the thing. Give it to, give a job to a busy person. So that's like with Bitcoin, it's like, if there was no incentive to do anything, you got to have an, like, that's why it's like the myth is that we die. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. I don't really know. But the idea is that you should think like you are going to because you need an incentive to get to work and be hungry, right? It's the, you know, that, yeah, I think that's very important. If you don't, yeah. then you got no reason to get out of bed. I, I, I can totally identify with that, by the way, but my uh, that's how I wrote my first book. I wrote it during uh, the 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 toughest period in my fiat job where where I was busy mm. all the time, literally all the time. Yeah. And I still yeah. found the time to write the damn book. Uh, yeah. And it's probably because like that was a, a way for my brain to just zone out and focus on something else. But I was still in this, you know, hamster's wheel work mode. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like like with everything, I think that can work for a while, but I think... That's not what you should strive for necessarily. Uh, a more balanced life is probably healthier. I mean, oh, 
yeah, still yeah. having having high stress levels at all points is is not a good thing. You need time I, to I, re- reflect and let let the let the thoughts, uh, you know, settle down and and such. Yeah, and that's a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on. No, it's right. Go on. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, I feel like you know when I was working at Wire, I was like burning the candle at both ends. You know, I feel like you're doing starting early and finishing late because this industry would never sleep. So you're like trying to figure out ways to stay up to scratch, stay up to date, and stuff. But I realized like moving back to Australia, it's like you've got to be balanced. Like you have to balance is, you know, happy is the new rich almost kind of thing. It means like, you know, if you are happy, like the hamster wheel thing is kind of this game you play with yourself and then you kind of realize, holy shit, I think there might actually be more to life than this in a way. Like it's almost like you kind of, if you have the, if your money is really simplified, then it makes everything else way simpler because it's such a hierarchy. Like it's so high up the food chain in terms of thought priorities or any mental cognizant decision I've got to make is going to be filtered by money. Do I have enough of it? Can I go to this place? Can I eat at that restaurant? Can I do this thing? Money, money, money. And so because it's this great filter, it means once you take care of it or you don't have a melting money supply, um, it means that you can just get to work on actually more meaningful things. And your brain sort of partitions it and says, okay, Bitcoin makes me sleep at night because I have full control over that. Now I don't have to think about whether or not I'm going to have control. I don't have to worry about that as much. So now your brain starts getting more bandwidth to fill up with more creative ideas. And that's, I think that's the, if I could say a money shot, that is the money shot to consciousness, like having the most bandwidth possible to be the best you possible. If we think about your brain like a fiber optic cable, this is how I think about it, like a data transfer pipe. The bigger the cable, uh, the more open-minded you are, right? So the more narrow-minded I am, the smaller the cable. So let's say I take everyone's opinion and I consider it sort of you know, half baked. So that's that, the size of the cable. Now, that's how much information is going to come to me. Now, the ability to process that is going to be empathy. So can I empathize with what this person is saying enough to understand how they're trying to deliver that information to me? And so the bigger the pipe and the better the empathy you have, the the more you can download information basically or comprehend it, let's say, or perceive a new opinion. And so I think like the, the pipe gets bigger, the less concerns you have. And if money is the biggest part of your concerns, then that's been taking up the most area where you could put basically a big pipe of new information into your brain. I don't know if that makes sense, but visually it feels like it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. A couple of points uh, on that. My my, my initial thoughts uh, are like being open-minded and bandwidth and all that. It's important, mm. but, but what sort of Bitcoin has done to me at least is to point out that open-mindedness is completely pointless without intellectual honesty. So like, yes, it's, like that, it's like that uh, Terry Pratchett quote, uh, the problem with an open mind is that people will come along and put stuff in it. <laughs> and oh, that's brilliant. Those, yeah. so you that's just, awesome. Yeah, it's one of my favorite quotes machines, Terry Pratchett. So, uh, so, so what you need is like, you need an open mind. So just open your head, but have a fucking filter. It, well, it the filters the truth. Know? Yeah. The filter yeah. the objectivity, usually. Yeah, like Exactly. You know, is yeah. this is this verifiable or not, or or is it yeah. is it either empirically testable, uh, which is a good filter, not a, albeit not a perfect one, but an even mm. better filter is the praxeological mathematical filter of is this an irrefutable axiom, like can, can, <laughs> is, it, is this impossible to argue against. And if yes. it is, then you should, that is your first principle. And that's where yeah. you should start keep your argument. Let's, we'll yeah. keep that part, keep that in the brain. That can yeah. stay if it satisfies yeah. that. Yeah. So, so the filtering mechanism is sort of more crucial than having the open mind. I mean, if you don't have the open mind, then you can't learn anything. And many people are <laughs> like that. They're very dogmatic and they never get yeah. out of, they think they got well, everything the thing, yeah. figured out when they're 20. And then they yeah. just do that uh, indefinitely and yeah. you, you never get anywhere being like that so you need an open mind to get anywhere but you yeah. need the filter to filter out the bullshit otherwise you might become a uh, a bitcoin cash person or an eth head or something <laughs> <laughs> oh god the cadano uh, <laughs> oh wait, the, wait a, wait a have... minute if if i may uh michael there's uh yeah. another thing about this what but what bitcoin does to your brain 
that I've been mm-hmm. on about for a long time is, is that the two things. Uh, first of all, when you have deflationary money, which uh, Bitcoin inevitably becomes and mm-hmm. from a certain perspective already is, yeah. uh, then you know that that thing will in all probability become more valuable than everything else you own over time, which incentivizes yes. you to save rather than spend. In other words, yes. you realize you get closer to this philosophical insight that my this quote from my grandfather's that uh, that I love, like that which you can do without you own. That's what that means. If you, especially if you have yes. the bitcoins uh, to replace yeah. whatever golden Lambo you crave, you own all the golden 100%. Lambos if you don't crave them. So I think yes. that's that's the biggest thing that Bitcoin does to your brain. And the yes. other thing is that it incentivizes you to help other Bitcoiners succeed with whatever they're up to. Because that it really does. I, it adds that much value to you. You start, it's like I'm good door knocking almost. Well, it feels like I go door knocking. Like that's why I'm calling friends and stuff like that. But it really, you feel so compelled because you feel how much value you get from it or relief or whatever it is, the mental something that it gives you. But you know that someone else will get it as well and you're like i've got to make sure that this person gets it that's why people think it's so cult-like but you're like Ugh, i'm like i'm even speaking on this now and i'm sure my neighbors can all hear me like i'm in an apartment building i'm sure they can all hear me they're like oh this idiot <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it certainly feels cult-like and ev- evangelical. But but if you mm-hmm. think about it, if you think the third thought, then uh, yeah. not only the second thought, then uh, it's actually fiat that is a cult. Because mm. it, it is a religious cult, because it does require belief. Uh, yeah, complete no, delusion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. Which, and Bitcoin does not require belief. It requires an understanding of game theory. And crypto mm-hmm. cryptography to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and uh, it, it requires a, a, a basic understanding of a couple of basically. different shit. Yeah, and uh, yeah. reasoning. Uh, so, yes. so it's not it's not based on a belief that's yeah. that's um, it's based on an observation and a yeah. a logical deduction of that observation. Yep. And just back to your grandfather, what your grandfather said, right? So yeah. if you think about, you know, anything you can do without you own, that's a really, really, really powerful thing because in the world of, let's say, addiction, right? You are the, you're powerless to this thing you're addicted to. Or let's say you're a drug, you're a drug addict. It's that it owns you because you can't do without it. So just like the inverse, you own it if you can do without it because you're, yes. you're going to be fine. You're going to live it, your life as you wish without it. And that's, I think about money is like your grand your grandfather's right. Imagine imagine deflationary money. Think about what deflationary money is in a system that hasn't finished growing yet. It's like us buying a it, okay, here we go, Willy Wonka, the everlasting gobstopper. It's exactly like that, but with money. It just you get grows grows in value. It's just like, dude, you can keep licking this everlasting gobstopper, but you will have it for 40 years. It's the same thing with Bitcoin. It's just like it keeps growing. Like that's all you gotta do. Just hold on to it. Don't, you know, just don't lose it, basically. So because I've been thinking about it, it's sort of like filling your car up with petrol once forever. And that's it. Or this highlighter, it's like buying a highlighter and when people print money, it's like me buying a highlighter and this losing ink and I'm not even using it. That's what printing money is basically doing, sort of the equivalent. So in the opposite way, it's sort of like, hey, this highlighter is getting more ink in it and I just bought it. Cool. <laughs> like when you start thinking about everything like that, it's like buying apples. Oh, you know what? Dude, listen to how good God is or whoever whoever made us, right? So I'm not sure who it was, but he put seeds and stuff. So that's like buying Bitcoin and getting more Bitcoins when you buy more Bitcoins. You just plant them and wait them. Imagine doing that. Imagine if you bought Bitcoins, you've got these time lock Bitcoins that get ripe in one year's time. That's like what happens when you buy fruit. It's like, cool. I don't know if it's fruit or vegetables, whatever the one with seeds is, but... Yeah, I think it's really cool. Dude, I the think they both have nature, seeds. Nature's code is law. <laughs> like, you know, Bitcoin's code is law. Nature's, the laws of nature are like nature's law or nature's code. Man, they've done some bangers. That's a it's pretty, pretty good incentive model for sure. <laughs> yeah, the best one imaginable, I guess. Like, yeah, it's been running like, for ages, so I, I'll take a look at it. It's yeah. pretty good. Today's show is brought to you by our sponsors. First up, Orange Pill App. Stack friends who stack sats, meet like-minded Bitcoiners near you, and help speed up hyper-Bitcoinization with Orange Pill App. 
Bitcoin isn't an online-only phenomenon, and Orange Pill App helps facilitate the social layer, connecting Bitcoiners in their local area. It maintains your privacy through the whole process, and since you have to pay to access the app, you know that everyone there cares about Bitcoin and is high signal. A great new feature is events. You can create events and meetups right from the Orange Pill app and help build your local community while maintaining the Bitcoin-only signal. Orange Pill app is available on iOS and Android. Download now. Next up, Wasabi Wallet, an open source, non-custodial desktop wallet that is trustless, easy to use, and affordable. It has CoinJoin built in to facilitate your privacy. Every Bitcoin transaction leaves a clear footprint, but with Wasabi, you can make sure that others can't track your steps and threaten your sovereignty. Just send your coins to Wasabi Wallet, wait, and your coins will be private on the other end. It's open source, trustless by design, and non-custodial. You have full control over your keys. Check it out now at wasabiwallet.io. Yeah, uh, yeah. You you mentioned time locking there, and uh, let's yeah. let's just make a left turn here uh, and talk about that because you are already you're a living legend for having done the most amazing time lock experiment in Bitcoin's uh, history. So tell us about that. Why why you did it? What it is? And uh, yeah. like any any links we need in order for our grandchildren to participate? <laughs> yeah, to get to ball out. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you I'll give you the Eli, Eli five. So basically, I was trying to think. Okay, what is going to happen when the Bitcoin rewards run out? And everyone was talking about how this is a big problem and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, well. Okay, sure. We're not going to increase the supply of Bitcoin because that breaks the rules. We're not allowed to do that. And remember, we don't break the rules because this is not our baby to break. We didn't make it. So it's not ours. It's sort of like a godchild, like a grandchild of someone that has died and you've got to look after it. That's kind of what we have to do. We have to preserve it as it was, not what we want. Um, but no, so the idea is like, if this chain is going to run out of coins, then we need to incentivize people to keep mining at the end. And I was like, well, at that point, the block reward is one Satoshi. Like you could fart and find a Satoshi in your office somewhere or whatever, in an old wallet somewhere or an old something, you'd find it somewhere. And you basically, that is like 10 minutes worth of the entire world's energy in 120 years. It's always like, okay, well, I'm retarded. So I know I'm not going to use my money properly over the course of my lifetime. So if I could make it more meaningful, then I may as well give it to someone else who's not retarded or many people who wouldn't be retarded. So I'm like, okay, fine. So what I'll do, I'll time lock it. In Bitcoin, there's a thing called time lock addresses. And what that means is you take a public key and you say, this is my public key and this is the block height that I want uh, it locked to. And it goes, okay, cool. And it creates using that public key and the block height, it mixes it together and it pushes out what's called a time lock address. So any money that goes into that time locked address, it cannot be touched until that block height is reached. And so I time locked it at block height 7.14 million, which is the end of the chain. So it's 2,136 or something. And I put 50 million Satoshis there. So now there's, it's gone from one Satoshi and then there's four years of nothing. And then it's, well, there's some stuff in that four years, but there's four years of zero block reward. And then it goes to 50 million. And the idea was to make it one one hundredth of the actual block reward schedule that we started with, which was 5 billion Satoshis. And so now this one would be 50 million Satoshi. So it's one one hundred. And the idea was to put that every, you know, in intervals. So like I put it in 210,000 block intervals, just like Satoshi did with the halvings to try and emulate these halvings. And the idea would be that everyone has the public key or everyone knows the private key that accesses it. So it's basically giving everyone the winning lotto ticket on earth and saying, yo, there is 50 billion screwy and bajillion dollars coming or Bitcoins coming your way. It would be like everyone getting a treasure map at the same time on Earth and having 10 minutes to find it, if that makes sense. And the goal is for everyone to work together so that we can all collaborate because at that point, there'd probably be massive mining pools or, you know, it'd be the equivalent of today if you had someone offer, if there was a Bitcoin block reward that was like six billion dollars basically everyone would turn on their block eruptors the things that plugged into old usb sticks any shitty miner i've got is getting plugged in for the chance of maybe winning this gigantic block 
And I think that's what can happen in the future. So everyone at one point will sort of get a chance to work with their neighbor or work with their friends and family or whoever it is. But everyone should be sort of linked together to try and win these blocks. Um, and the funny thing is the miners will have a really big incentive because now miners, if I know that Bitcoin has got rewards for the next 8, 10, 12 years, that's going to give me more uh, more reason to start a Bitcoin mining company now. Um, basically, if I know, like if I was starting a Bitcoin mining company and I knew that the block reward ran out in eight years, uh, I'd be less likely to start, to start a Bitcoin mining company. If the block reward was going to run out in 40 years, then I'd be more inclined to start one. So basically, it's just sort of throwing more noise at these FUDs, basically. Well, not noise, actually. It's the opposite. It's trying to throw Bitcoins at it uh, to basically... Yeah, uh, subsidize the block rewards. Really, it's super basic. It's just an idea, and I think I think over time it will. Uh, I think there'll be more. It's more of an artistic, an artistic canvas. I thought where I can put this there forever. So whatever that is, it's probably someone's going to look at why it was put there, or when it was put there, and what the motivation was. Just like you know the background you've got, which is is that the fractal encrypt key? This was something. One yeah. of those. Yeah. Infinity keys, like you know, that's yes. a beautiful piece of historical artwork, and I think that's going to be part of Bitcoin's, you know, story and legend. Like just like Infinity divided by twenty-one million is, you know, that equation will be part of the story. People in the future, hundred, literally, they might have a movie about you. Know, literally, you might be the next Oppenheimer. We don't even know what's happening. Infinity divided by twenty-one million might be the new equation that <laughs> that splits the atom. So we yeah, never but, know. But you know, that's all the stuff. Where that's why we're really privileged to be in the time we are. Like we've got some hard times i think there's some hard times around us as a species right now like obviously looking we're so misaligned in so many different things um but we're getting better i think over time but in the future people will look back on this time and be like wow imagine being you know imagine being around when it was so easy to buy bitcoin or acquire coins or anything like that because in the future people aren't going to be talking about bitcoins they're going to be talking about satoshis because Bitcoins would just be too wildly unattainable. It's only ever going to get talked about as sats, really, I think, because we're pretty close to that. With more, with as, as the block reward shrinks and as the price starts going exponential, I think, you know, we've got people won't refer to Bitcoins very much. I think it's going to be sats. Or, and I don't mean, I just mean basically the denomination of a Bitcoin, people's mental models, people, most people won't have close or know someone who owns a whole Bitcoin. That's just weird to think. When you think about a total money, it's like someone would be famous for knowing someone who owns an entire Bitcoin. Like that's just weird. It's, it's weird to think. Yeah. Yeah. But but I love projecting, you know, the thoughts, see where yeah. the thought, thought vector takes me and try to pull yeah. it out as far into and uh, extrapolate it into the future as far as I can. Like that's, yeah. that's where the real juice is. And that's when you... That's when the holy shit moments come with Bitcoin for sure. We, because, so here's, because, a pretty, no. here's a cool holy shit moment for us. Okay. So if I if we have locked coins into the future, right, and this chain is unbreakable, it means that basically with absolute certainty, someone is looking at these coins in the future. Now, the second part about that is because it's probably going to be quite impactful. It means they're probably looking at other hints and clues about if there's other coins around or something. So they'd be watching content like this. So there's actually a really, really high probability right now that people in 130 years are watching this piece of content. And because it, it's like Einstein or whoever these guys in Oppenheimer, right? They're walking around, but we are the only recollections we have of their thoughts at the time are uh, whatever was in their journals or, you know, what people heard or read. But now if you think about how heavily our identities are getting digitized, it's really easy to know what everyone's sort of like or thinking because we see so much work get piled in digitized. So many photos, so many speeches, so many hours. Joe Rogan, if you wanted to watch every single episode of Joe Rogan back to back for 24 hours straight, it'd still be 245 days of content. Wow. That's all it is. Think about that on a training algorithm. Think about that on anything to really, to truly understand Joe Rogan. You could put that all into an algorithm, just like change the speech to text. And you could probably get a really, really good synthesized understanding of how Joe would think in certain circumstances. Plus, because it's been such a diverse range of topics, that's going to make the algorithm smarter or, or give it a, probably a bit more balance. But sure. when we think about all this stuff, that's all going to happen. The future will be, the future will be much more 
closely entangled with the past because mm-hmm. they will understand the past much better. So they'll understand us as people today, what made us tick and stuff because they have just so much more content to consume or to understand. Unless there's some big like, you know, great digital nuclear warhead that gets rid of all the content, then that would be, but we keep like we keep all the algorithms that got rid of all the content. I don't know. Um, but it'd have to take something like that. Otherwise, we're rich. Yeah. Literally, Bitcoin is writing history. Like, we don't even know yeah, how yeah. big that is. And, and it's history, just obvious his, to think about. History will function very differently in the future because it's not written by winners anymore if, if we have an objective history book, which is the time yeah. chain. Yeah. And, and uh, as you say, like this, old books and notes and stuff were uh, yeah. generational knowledge. But now yeah. we have uh, generational knowledge. Like, I mean, if this is an, a historical document, I apologize for the 10 F bombs I already dropped. Like, me like, too, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I mean, you did. You didn't even use it once. <laughs> but oh, no, no, no. Uh, and, uh, and this is going to be the intro clip as well that, that uh, <laughs> discussion of fuck tons. So uh, the two of you are both going at it, but don't worry. It won't all right. All right. right. All right. Just don't, don't, uh, don't yeah. say anything racially tinged. But that's, we're basically no, fine. no, no. A, a fuck ton is, <laughs> is fine, though, because that's, that's an important intellectual discussion. That, uh, yeah, that you did some measurement. Few, yeah, future historians are, are going to debate that for a long, long time, I think. Oh, man. Right. This could be banned because people will lose brain cells in the future. Listen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the sets bits debate. Have you been following that? Like, there's, there's a, a small subsection of Bitcoiners, including Adam Back, that wants us, mm-hmm. wants us to use bits instead of sets. Which is obviously no. stupid. Yes. <laughs> no. Well, I just, I'll just tell you what, if we think about the process to tell someone something, right? Hey, yeah. dude, you've got to go buy Bitcoin. What's a Bitcoin? Oh, a Bitcoin is a thousand, a thousand milli bits. Or what is it? A thousand bits. Oh, what's a bit? It's a hundred Satoshis. Or whatever. It's you know, like, I, if I sell someone, when you tell someone the money, you tell them the maximum denomination, like the maximum range and the lowest range. So, oh, here's one Bitcoin. Oh, the, uh, one Bitcoin is a hundred million Satoshis. Oh, okay, cool. One Bitcoin. Oh, what's one Bitcoin? Oh, it's uh, a thousand millibits or it's a thousand bits. It's like, well, what's a bit? It's like, oh, that's a thousand Satoshi. Like, do you know, you see, we've added a step. So I just don't know why we'd add a step. It's either it's uh, a exactly. Bitcoin, basically. Yes. Okay, it I'm, 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 I'm going to jump in. I don't mind. Plus, I don't mind if people do it, but it just, I'm not, because I'm lazy. I'm not going to tell people three steps when I can tell them in two steps. Uh, no, okay, I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in as devil's advocate. I'm gonna I'm gonna devil's advocate this thing here really quickly. Uh, not saying I'm I'm on this position. Just devil's advocate. No, no. Listen. So j- so just just to be precise, the the bits are 100 satoshis, and so the the reason that that has been put forward is that that's the only dollars and cents exactly so there's a million bits in a bitcoin and if a bit becomes uh one dollar essentially a, uh, if at a million dollar or euro or whatever your shit coin is uh bitcoin then a bit is one of the shit coin so so it's going to happen a lot faster right than sats a hundred million dollar uh, bitcoin is going to happen but it's not going to happen quite so quickly right so yeah we might get bit. Uh, I, I see the sales. I see the sell. I see the sell on it. And it may it probably actually look a lot more stable as well uh, relative to like stable coins and bits and stuff. So I definitely see the sell on it. Um, I'm not opposed to it in any way. I'm just in my head. I'm probably, I know what my brain would kind of gravitate towards first. But um, I think that makes sense. There's a, there's a case there. There's a case there uh, for sure. Okay. Okay. Let's. I'll play Satoshi's advocate as opposed to the devil's advocate and say that uh, the block that the, the fees are already nominated in sats per bytes and bits. Like the the bits are already there. They're already units for something else. That is, you know, uh, price yeah, term yeah. sats. So so why the confusion? Yeah, I, that's the problem. I think when it comes to the retail level, bits works like for Block Explorer, oh, not for Block Explorer, but for like, uh, let's say Coin Gecko style sites and all these sort of, you know, charting sites. I think it works. But for the mechanics under the hood, I think the language is already there and it's already occupied by something else pretty materially. Yeah, I think and, actually, and I didn't think about that. It only works that for sense. retail for, for a limited amount of time. For a limited amount of time, it's a shortcut to lo- to look like reducing volatility. In the same way, people wanted to reduce the denomination on Coinbase because people thought, "Oh, it's yeah. going to be too intimidating to buy a whole Bitcoin that costs 
$50,000. We need to change it to millibits or bits. So, you know, when they, when people, cause, cause there's the nature of like people's natural tendencies is one Bitcoin is $20,000. Oh, one XRP is $2. You mean to tell me I can get a thousand of these things? It's like, yes, dude, but they're not worth it. Oh, cool. I'll take 20 grand worth of XRP instead of buying one Bitcoin. And that's just the psychological retardation that we've got. And that, so that was another case I saw for, um, for the, for the changing of the denominations as well. And I, I do see it. I do see it. But again, I do see that's a short, sort of a short term, uh, short term, it's a short term problem. So yeah, it yeah. is that material to people, they can go for it. But it's, I just think it is medium term, maybe. Medium term fix for unit bias, which uh, like people should yeah. learn that lesson anyway. But Bitcoin's and- so strong, man. Like there's a whole world out there now that people are just like, Dude, crypto and Bitcoin aren't even the same. And I'll tell you why I reckon this time is different. In the in the post bull run sort of recovery, here's the thing. Now, I ran an exchange and I understand the mentality behind all this stuff pretty, pretty decently. So people got burnt. P- people in the 2017 bull run, people got in and everyone got hyped. And then you had ICOs that came out the year before. So you have this spray of just ICO tokens everywhere. Now, lots of people went into those and lots of people got wrecked because they got basically lost heaps of money and the market went to shit. Now, the difference between that is that person comes back thinking, okay, well, I need to figure out how not to get wrecked this time. And so that person comes back and they eventually evolve to want, not wanting to get fucked around by these centralized teams and they just go, fuck it, I'm going to Bitcoin. Now, after the 2022 20, bull market or whenever the, the 2020 halving, after that one, which was, you know, the most recent one, people didn't get burnt by making as bad choices. People like bad choices are the market tanking. People got literally their money stolen from them. Like there's a difference between me, like the taste in my mouth, if I put my money in the stock market and I lose it versus the stock market gets robbed by a bunch of crooks by like three people that just did a backdoor on the whole stock market. Let's say three hours capital, Terra and Luna and then SBF or whatever. I'm now thinking, fuck the stock market. That's all I'm thinking. The first thing, I'm not thinking, oh shit, maybe I'll find, I go, fuck the stock market. I'm, oh, but part of the stock market, I'm what I'm buying Bitcoin. You don't want anything that touches that whole system. Do you know what I mean? It feels like that's the type of people that are coming back then. And I think, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's brand is so strong. Like it has not broken. Like, and that's one of the most perfect things about it is its immutability, like Bitcoin's stubbornness and resilience. And so, People know that Bitcoin's not crypto. Like that's just a thing. Because the crypto people that are making money in crypto on YouTube and doing all that shit, they know that Bitcoin is a whole different class. Like it's a different kettle of fish. That's why they don't try and piggyback on it because to piggyback on Bitcoin is really hard to do and add value. And it's very hard to add value to the community because there's just so many people doing, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's very easy to add to add value to shit products because they're not valuable. So it's like, hey, you come in and you just give them some airtime and they feel important. And that's what you're doing with these ICO tokens and shit. So I think there's a big difference between Bitcoin and crypto. And I think that everyone post this last sort of carnage in the past 18 months, let's say, everyone's coming back with a different taste in the mouth. And the taste in the mouth is not the, you know, it's getting rugged by crypto. It's basically buying Bitcoin and then sitting down. I think that's what it's going to look like. That's the end of my rant. Hey, yeah, it's a good rant. Well, I, I always say that crypto is the opposite of Bitcoin. It's it's infinite uh, and Many Bitcoin is finite. Like, like yeah. it's li- well, if not the opposite, then at least the inverse. So, uh, yeah. My latest equation, uh, I, I don't think it will catch on as much as this one, but uh, yeah. it's that... Uh, Bitcoin equals one divided by clown, uh, one divided by clown world. So it, it's it, it, clown world. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's the literal inverse of clown world. That's where we're headed when we have this thing. So people who adopted, uh, they 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 head in the opposite direction. Uh, <laughs> yeah, clown world shrinks really exponentially. Yeah, how far is back- it though? You know what's crazy? How did we get here? Like when you think about it, like literally, I mean, this seriously, like. None of us asked to be born here. And you look at like all these, like I, I read these books and stuff about people in history where they tried to say to like the citizens, oh, we're going to charge you 3% for teas and papers. And then next thing you know, the citizens have like a civil war over it. But we're sitting here like, you know, 
watching Oppenheimer paying 45% income tax being like, oh, thanks, Mr. Government. Do you know what I mean? It's just like this, this yeah. system is, I just don't know how we let it. it it's yeah. gone so far yeah. beyond yeah. its bonkers. Yes. The lesson learned from Oppenheimer should be I'm never paying one single cent in taxes again because they're go- literally going to destroy the world. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. Like, that's, yeah. that's the lesson you should take away. Oh, man. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. And, please, uh, please. Back to the unit bias thing. Uh, I yeah. had a point about that. Uh, yes. I, I think the whole, the whole thing about this unit biases and, and uh, dollars and cents and denominations, maybe we've seen this thing from the wrong perspective all along. Is Bitcoin really money? Like no other money that preceded it had the same properties. Uh, it, uh, and if you really look yeah, at it under, yeah, under, oh, under the hood, it's, it's, it's nothing but an agreement on a fixed set of rules via a, a, a set of mathematical inc- equations that we can run in, in the back of our heads and yeah. thereby enable people to interact with one another peacefully uh, with honest value expressions. Uh, that can, uh, you know, express value in a way that nothing that preceded it ever could. So mm-hmm. the, the the denominations and everything. Is it cool your money? Do you think? Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. Uh, I think you know, I, in an already, ironic way, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, I I, I think that's one of my more popular tweets. Like uh, calling Bitcoin money is degrading to Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. what I yes. It, it will, based because on I what think it is. I think yeah. it is because this yeah, is a yeah. tool tool for getting everyone into fucking Zen mode and not yeah. something you buy Lambos with. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing: you learn really quickly not to spend this thing. Like that's well, I learned this really hard. So my brother and I, we went on a surf trip, like five, like ten, maybe ten years ago now. And um, and at the time I had no money, and so I had to spend bitcoins to buy. And it cost like eight and a half bit or seven and a half bitcoins, I think, at the time for like a three thousand dollars surf trip. So after that, you're like every year. I calculate the price of that. I think I have a spreadsheet where it just got it's got like an API call to the price of Bitcoin and it just tells me how much that costs. So it's uh but you learn quickly. Like that's a good thing. Like you learn, you do I, it and you go, oh shit, this is not the first thing I'm gonna spend. It is worth selling my old shitty surfboard for two hundred bucks before I spend two hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin or oh, whatever it is. Here's another little uh mathematical experiment I did. Uh uh if you take if you have ten bitcoins, and mm-hmm. you want you want to live off a thousand, uh, what was that? A uh, hundred euros per day, like mm-hmm. a mo- modest life. You live off a hundred euros per day. It's totally yeah. possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not if you have a family, but for a single person, it's sure. absolutely yeah, possible. Yeah. A nomadic lifestyle, sure. No, no. Yeah. So uh, if in order to do that forever, by just shipping away at your stack, you you have. 10 Bitcoins, and you need them to appreciate by 11% per year yes. uh, on average. Yes. Now, they do, uh, they appreciate by over 200% per year on average. So, mm-hmm. so if you have 10 You're Bitcoins. You're well in surplus. Yes. You, you, if you have 10 Bitcoins, you, uh, it's highly likely that you can just step off the hamster's wheel and go and live your life as you wish. For the rest of your days and your children's days and your grandchildren's days forever, by Bitcoin just appreciating by eleven percent per year. And even if an, in a hyper, totally hyper Bitcoinized world where everything mm. runs on Bitcoin, the uh, the purchasing power of, of Bitcoin can still go up by eleven percent per year pretty easily. Since uh, yes. since uh, you know the uh, the. So there's plenty of room the, for it to grow. Basically, the, the cost of everything yeah. drops. So, yes. yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, if you have a a stack of Bitcoin, you're probably closer to total freedom than you think. Especially if you're if you get into this minimalist mindset. So yes, um, yeah. you are 100 percent correct. I'll tell you one of the which things, was though. the by the way, which was the key all along, and like the the funniest thing I know about this thing is that. What when I think about it is like this unlocked something in human beings. That's what it did, which yes. means we had it all along. It was all yes. it, it was always there. We just yes. didn't know how to tap into it. Yes, <laughs> we needed something to slow us down. 
That's what I think. Something to slow down our cadence from, because on the Bitcoin blockchain, one second is not one second. One second is 10 minutes. Like that's the the stroke of a clock is 10 minutes, not one second. And so like, I think that slowed down everyone's time preference for everything. Like people started learning more, you know, like. Oh, that's a beautiful metaphor. So it's intersubjective time has 10 Mm -hmm. minutes per second. And yeah, and not and not one second, which objective time had, like yeah, well, it's like the clock strikes, right? So I've I've thought of Bitcoin as like this perfect machine, like this perfect clock for man, machine, and nature, because we align our clocks with the sun, and our clocks, the machines align their clocks, call it the Bitcoin blockchain, with our sun, which is the GMT time, like the timestamps, but we're all sort of using each other's times transitively. So they're like by, by way of trans- transitivity, because they know what our time is. So machines in the blockchain world know what our time is, which means they also know where the sun is at the same time, because if they know how our, our times works, then they can, this is a world for AI in the future. AI will be thinking about this stuff because what's going to happen is AI, we're going to have to prove, sorry, this is going to be a bit of a tangent, but I just realized we're probably going to have to prove to AI that we're actually sentient. And that's going to be the hard part because AI will be sort of a population and sort of immersed on a digital world, basically the same as us. So now that I'm thinking about clocks and stuff like that with machines, I feel like we're going to have to prove to machines that a real world exists. It's beautiful because we we might be able to prove that by by proving that our time way of keeping time is intersubjective rather than objective. Because like mm-hmm. the, in in physics, you can point to specific there are specific points in time space. On mm-hmm. the time chain, that's not the case. It it is mm-hmm. what we co- collectively uh, agree upon is the correct time that becomes the correct time. So the map defines the territory, hence it. It defines time, yes. uh, and it is the definition of ins- intersubjective time. You know what? Here's the what. Here's one. Bitcoin is the z-axis for humanity. So, like, if we've got x and y as latitude and longitude, like every times every latitude and longitude moment right. has a z-axis, the block height basically. And so, I, th- I feel like that's kind of that's where we're at at the moment. But yeah, you know, slowing down our time preference, it's, made, it's unlocked. A, it's unlocked patience, I think, for a lot of people. It's also, do you know what I went, I think it has done? Because it's shown you what, what actual value is, it means your brain has started backtracking every single thing you've ever known as valuable. Yeah. And it's kind of throwing them off the shelf mentally. And so now you sit there and you go, whoa. And now you've got this empty shelf with nothing on it other than a Bitcoin. You're like, okay, so obviously I've been doing it wrong. And that's almost like this unlock moment where you're like, okay, less is more. Like the less I do, the more Bitcoin I can have. About the Z-axis, there another, uh, this yeah. is a thing that I can, yeah, there aren't many people on the globe that I can talk to stuff like this about, but uh, yeah. you know about imaginary numbers, right? And the number I. Yeah, 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 yeah. The square. The square. Riemann zeta function and all those guys with complex numbers yeah. and all that stuff. So, yeah. so you know about complex numbers and uh, the the square root of minus one, and I think yeah, someone already irrational did whatever. irrational numbers like uh, so. So even even a minus number, a negative number, is really ir- irrational. They don't exist. Like there's not no. no such thing as a negative number. Yes. Uh, so in that sense, in that sense, the irrational numbers are as it, uh, they're not more irrational than just minus one. <laughs> so the no. square root of minus one is uh, mm-hmm. as tangible as minus one when you really think about it. So where does the because, Satoshi... Because both are, no, both are non-existent, basically. No. Both don't have an answer to it, you mean? And then, yeah. So so here's my, my thought of the day and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, attached question to that. It, is a Satoshi tang- tangible? Does it ex- does it exist if it only exists in our heads? What like a normal number uh, is used mostly to represent something in objective reality. Yes, and a Satoshi is also used to be it's to it's also used for the same purpose, but in a totally yep. different light, in a totally different yep. way. Yep. So. It connects to reality in ways that normal numbers don't, but it's still a number yes. and it still connects to reality. But it's yes. a way of counting 
that includes not only the amount of a unit of something, but yes. the value of it. Yes. Which which is never which is something that has never existed in mathematics before. Uh, so yeah, we have this is a lot of fluff. Number, but... <laughs> well, because every number is real, let's say, tangible. And the reason I say tangible is because every number has had work put in to generate it. So every Satoshi that is generated, is it physical or non-physical or whatever, every Satoshi that's generated is unique because it maps back to a specific electrical current running through that Bitcoin mining rig on the electrical grid that landed the block reward. And at that moment in space time, quite literally in space time, latitude, longitude, so find the place on the electrical grid, latitude and longitude, where it happened, and add a Z-axis and say block height 100, and it might be, you know, Iris Energy has just mined it in, I don't know, Texas or wherever, Riot game, Riot's done it in Texas. And so you've got, you know, that, like that's latitude and longitude and then the Z-axis of what block height, but it is a true as physical as we are. Like right now, the only physicality I have is that I've got an electrical current running through my brain stem to my brain and my heart oscillating back and forth, just like a Bitcoin mining rig or, or a cryptographic key, which is just an electrical current. Um, but to your point, these numbers become real because they get hardened time stamped into history because they're backed by energy and work. See, that's why when I write these numbers down, they don't mean anything. But when the ledger writes them down, it means something because we agree on the amount of work that have to go into producing these numbers. So it's like it's like the it's like the collective grand number line for humanity in a way where it's like this is the record. We're up to this number. This is how high humanity can count. And right now it's like block 793,000 or something. But every single number has been checked and accounted for. And just like just like if you think of this is an interesting way that I think about the blockchain now is every block encompasses the previous state of the whole chain. And so just like with numbers, the number seven must include all the information prior to the number seven. So it must have some sort of mathematical connection to the number six, which is, you know, minus one. So yes, it's next door to six, but then the number five, the number four, the number three, the number two, the number one. If we thought of seven as a human being, seven would know six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, it might not know 125 because it's not that far, like it's far away from it. But if we think about, just thinking about this, where the things that go into a number are its divisors, and that's what makes up a number, like it gives it meat and potatoes almost. Now, just like in a blockchain, the thing that goes into a block is the block headers. And the block headers are the way that we say, we know every single thing that existed before this. And that's the way we all agree. When we look at that, we go, okay, we all do, we all can agree on this. Just like when we choose a number is prime. When I say a number is prime, so I say number seven is a prime number. What that means is, that has no divisors other than one and itself. And so that means I've done the work. So net prime numbers are like nature's proof of work where it goes, no, I've checked number seven. It's not divisible by six, two, three, four, five. So I've done all the work for every single block before seven to know that seven is prime. And that's what we think about. We've done the work. So when I think about the number line and prime numbers, they look like a blockchain to me, which is they're all a body of work because a block is only valid if all the observers agree that it's valid, which means it met the protocol rules, right? Which is hard coded. These observers we call our nodes. Just like I'm, I'm observing the number line and you could, we're nodes observing these numbers and we can say, yes, they are prime because they satisfy these rules that we have, which we say this is a prime number. I don't know if that, does that make any sense, sort of? It does. And uh, a follow-up question is, do you remember PrimeCoin? Yeah. Oh God! Prime, prime yeah, what do you mean? Do I remember of... it? I mean, do you mean how are my bags going? Yeah. <laughs> prime, prime coin was one of the first shit coins to ever exist, and uh, yeah. uh, then the first wave in in 2013. And the thing was that miners would be rewarded for finding high prime numbers, as mm -hmm. well as as yeah. And the thing that does is like. It's so easy to debunk because if you have another incentive than just to secure the network in order to get the, if the, if it's not in internal, but as soon as you yeah. take something external to, uh, as an, a, a part of the incentive model, yes. it's obviously yes. a worse incentive model than, than already exists in Bitcoin. And it's like, it's like the Hayek said about gold, like, or the, uh, 
uh, uh, the fact that gold has an industrial use case, uh, some industrial yeah. use cases, and it's used for yeah. jewelry, actually makes it a worse form of money, not a better one. Like, yes. if you want perfect money, focus on the money aspect of it, and and do not one thing really well, be yeah. money really well, right? Yeah, yeah. What was so? What was the specific question again? What was it? The, no, no. The, do you remember Prime Coin? That was the specific. Oh, that's right. It was Prime Coin. Yes. Oh, but yeah. you know what? To speak about that. So to speak about that's where I was going. So Prime Coin. When you have a distributed system of any sort, that distributed system has rules and it's bound to specific rules, thermodynamics, laws of nature, whatever they are. So when you introduce, let's say, an additional incentive then that's not part of the distributed system. And that's got to be now manufactured to maintain this distributed system. If, let's say I've got Bitcoin, um, or, you know, you offer an incentive, right, for people to, uh, you know, we're giving away the first thousand Bitcoins for free or something. Obviously, that means, uh, perfect, perfect, here we go, Groupon. Groupon basically sold coupons to cupcake places, to bakeries or restaurants, and it said, hey, come here, you'll get 70% off, blah, blah, blah. You get two bottles, of, two glasses of champagne, two entrees, two mains. Cool. All those people, they will come and they will buy that and they will show up at that restaurant. But the restaurant will never see them again. That was an external motivation to be there, which was a really big discount. And so that is not sustainable. So that incentive model is now not an incentive model. It becomes more of a marketing promotional tactic almost. And and so when you start introducing external uh, conditions to a distributed system, the best way to think about it is a person on drugs, a person with drugs coming into their body, it will change the whole composition of how this system will operate and its sustainability, its incentives, its motivations and all that sort of stuff. And so that's why with, you know, with Bitcoin, Prime Coin, when every, and that's why all this bullshit in crypto where they do um, uh, yield farming or whatever it is, it's basically saying trade my token a bunch so that we can get a lot of trade volume so people think we're legitimate so that then you can earn some of these tokens that don't really have any value, but please, because this is my product and I want to make money. You know what I mean? It's just incentives. They need to be rock solid from day zero. And if you want to change them, you can change them. But think about changing an incentive like changing a physical human decision. Yeah. It, will, it forever changes everything. Do you know? Oh. Yeah. Two, yeah. Two things this reminds me of. One is foreign aid, like government aids to other countries, to developing countries. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the same same thing. When they run out of money, they just claim that, oh, we need more money. And they get well, more exactly. money and they don't have to do yeah. anything. And it's also going to change their behavior if they get bailed out every time. Same exactly. thing. And also yeah. it's it's akin to the arguments are made for alchemy in the element zero chapter that uh uh, alchemists, uh, so a successful ac alchemists mm. would would have destroyed the value of gold because if gold was cheap to produce, I mean, yeah. he might enrich himself very quickly. Uh, so I think central banking is successful alchemy. <laughs> they, oh, basically, man. that's that's what it is. <laughs> it, it enriches yeah. the alchemists uh, in short term, but destroys the value of the thing they're trying to create. So what they yeah. should have been looking for is the properties of gold and not gold itself, which is what yes. Satoshi found in Element Zero. So, yes. and the same yes. is with foreign aid. Like if you look at micro loan programs for the develop for for developing countries, they yeah. they uh, help them much more because if you if you actually if people are, well, are incentivized, the, the actually, incentive, right? The, yeah. If we die, we have an incentive to live. Just like if you have a loan, you have an incentive to pay something back instead of if it's just indefinite, never. You're never working towards something. No. And oh. there's a saying like like foreign aid is like uh, to developing countries is poor people in rich countries paying to rich people in poor countries. <laughs> and I love that framing because oh, that's, that's what well, actually that's happens. What it is. It's so well, it provocative, that. but that's what it is. It's taxpayer money yeah. going funneled to 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 some some bureaucratic asshole in in, in a yeah. crappy country. Yeah, most of it, mostly. Yeah, controversial. This I know. Of course, of course. Like a disclaimer that this is not true for all foreign aid, and there no, are very very not. good health organizations. Well, yeah, well, that, that's like the foreign aid. I'm trying to lock my coins into the future for the future. So it's not a foreign country, it's a future country. I don't know whoever it is, but it's sort of like foreign aid, but to a different part of civilization. Oh, that's 
And this this uh, this is a very like I, I'm thinking. I don't know about you, Luke, but there are tangents to uh, uh, the talk we had with Sailor when he talks about you know the most altruistic thing you can do is to share wealth with people who share your values, and the yeah. best way to do that is just to die with your bitcoins. I heard that after I heard Michael say uh, Sailor say that, and I was like, oh, that's so funny because that's basically what I've been doing for a little bit of time is just to try to like. Throw them yeah. in the future, but you can die with them. Here's the thing: your coins, they're not, they can't leave the ledger. So you get to choose the the last yeah. message that you say with your information. Let's call this money. So you get to choose how they go. And so, you know, Pete, for example, my brother, he does lots with inheritance planning. You know, what happens when you die? Because there is so much rolling value that's got to roll between lifetimes because it's you got to think on this scale now because we have an asset that can last lifetimes almost. So um, but I think that, yeah, we've got to think about, well, what's our story when we die? We've all got, you know, 50 or 60 years or 80 years left or whatever it is. Um, you don't want to take them to the grave. That's boring. You know, like you can take them to the grave, but you can also, you can create a treasure hunt for miners in the future. You can do, yeah. you can do so much. And that's, that arguably gets the Bitcoins into more competent hands. Like yes. <laughs> if, it, if there's... Because the whole world will know it's coming. So the whole world, so imagine yeah. the whole Bitcoin community as a team, we all knew or whatever it was, we all knew in 20 years there was some... Well, I'll give you an example. We all know that there's a thing called the 2038 problem in computer science yeah. that's coming and that's going to have to be solved. We're going to have to figure out a solution towards that. But... We know it's coming, so we can plan ahead. Just like what? when we know things are coming, yeah, predictability our, reduces risk. Give our uh, listeners the TLDR on the 2038 problem, please. Oh, get it be a really TLDR because I'm not totally experienced in it, but I think it's basically when they created the timestamp system, it was a countdown system, and it counts down from like 1971 or something like that, or 1979, some specific date, basically. And the idea is that it's running out of time to count down to. Is, is what I understood it as. So basically, oh, yeah. that's it's sort of like this Y2K style problem, but it's where they basically the count has gone to zero. So a lot of clocks on computers sort of don't have any, they can't increment now because they've incremented the furthest they could go. Because if you think about zero being, if they were counting down from a date, again, that's how they were creating time was the day, the amount of time from a specific date. It basically, it's counted down to zero all the way to the bottom and it can't go any further. So it means we've got to come up with a new way of uh, time stamping stuff. I reckon, here's what I think is going to happen. I reckon the whole world is going to slow down to 10 minutes and we're going to use, instead of talking time, we're just going to talk block heights. You know, you see people talking about it now, we're going to slow down. Time will not exist and it'll be all block heights because the most secure thing in the world is going to be the block hide. That's the most assured thing that you and me anywhere on earth can agree on right now. Other well, than that, okay. it'd be the sun in the sky. One caveat, uh, like <laughs> mm -hmm. one little thing about that is that mm -hmm. there is an upper and a lower limit to the 10 minute interval. If the hash rate mm -hmm. is too low, then, then it can't go above, like I think it's a three hour window each way. I don't remember yeah, yeah, the yeah. exact the, the medium the, time. I think it's two hours or something. But yeah, yeah. but it doesn't matter because we're not. No, but the thing is, we're not thinking minutes anymore. Minutes are gone because they're too arbitrary and they're too but different. Aren't they, aren't they hard coded into into the? Well, no, no, no that protocol. part is. But we don't care because the only thing I'm going to do is if I say, "Hey, I'm going to meet you at block eight hundred thousand for coffee." I'm going to oh, meet yes. you at block eight hundred thousand for coffee. I'm not. I don't care. It doesn't matter when my node says it's eight hundred thousand. That's when it's eight hundred thousand. All right. Is that we we. Is that where we can finally, finally forget that that, that carpenter from two thousand years ago? Like, hey, like, I like the carpenter. <laughs> He's a man. He's a man. Uh, but no, but so, but you, this is the thing, right? If machines are doing all the timekeeping, and machines are going to be in the economy, because AI is going to basically make machines part of the economy, so we're going to have a population to increase. A, Digital population, a physical population, probably like 8 billion, and a digital population of about 25 billion, which means every device and every machine will have its own identity. And then the whole premise of identity will just be a cryptographic key. Because the only thing proving you are you and I am me on the internet is our cryptographic keys. And so if every machine can get a cryptographic key, then we're going to have all these machines basically all um, participating in uh, in all of this Basically, there's internet stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, 
Oh, feel right. like I got lost. Oh, block heights. Block heights. So it's a time for machine. Yeah. So if machines are doing everything, they're going to be the ones record keeping anyway. And they're going to be like, they have no time preference. If I'm a machine, all I need to know is I've got to get my job done and have I cryptographically been paid for it. So if I can prove with a cryptographic transaction that I have been paid for something and this person's asked for it, and I'm a machine, I'm like, okay, cool. Well, this person's paid for it. They're going to do the work, but I don't mind when I get the work because I'm a machine and I've only got rules. Like their time, they're not dying, basically. They're not worrying about their next meal. They don't think like that yet. Um, but I think it's going to be very interesting once chat GBT, or not chat GBT, but once, I don't like calling it AI because AI implies there's some emergent intelligence, which there's not. It's just a big no. pattern matching system. So if yeah. anything, it's if you, you and me, all of us, we would be able to achieve the exact same results as ChatGPT or whatever. But ChatGPT is expedited intelligence. So I think we should start re rewriting it from AI yeah. to AI. No, we should Be remove the word. The, the thing people don't get about it is that it lacks agency, and that's the most important no thing for for for. Uh, yeah. uh, for uh, intelligence, it's free will. It's yeah. like uh, purpose, as you said before. So, is, that's, uh, there, it. that's it. It can't make decisions of, on its own. People worry about, oh, well, what's going to happen if, you know, what's going to happen if AI goes rogue? Here's it, the thing. Nothing can go, like, <laughs> it can't go rogue. It's still got to communicate through our systems, our channels, our everything. So if yeah. anything, it, it's, it's always got to use our products. It's not going to be able to make its own new telephone yeah. network. So any communication channels will always be uh, observed, let's say, by humans. Um, yeah, but the thing is, for for anything to go rogue, it needs agency. Like it needs yes. free will. Yeah, it yeah. needs the the, the to, to want something. And yes. a, a, and the current AIs they do nothing of the sort. Like they they uh, they are extremely far from that, and they have nothing to do with Skynet. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 biggest, the funniest thing, the irony with AI is that it's a very, you know, AI is this next mastery that people are kind of looking at. Um, mm -hmm. And they think it's the next the next coming of Jesus. So whoever makes the sentient robot or whatever is the, you know, the next coming of Jesus. The reality is it's not really like that. And most of the reasons why AI doesn't progress as fast as it should is because of the egos of the operators where they want to yeah. impose their own rules and sort of different tweaks that they think, oh, no, 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 I know better than nature or whatever it is that they, they take these algorithms that are really designed in nature because nature has all the best algorithms, heat equations, wave equations, all of them are yeah. that life. With 100% up live, so, <laughs> literally, like, yeah, yeah. like dude, it's 40 billion years it's been online. How long has your algorithm been online? Like, yeah, so like when you follow that, I find like one of the biggest things it seems like with these AI systems, like, I've noticed chat GBT has turned from dude, a Rhodes Scholar to a lemon pie. Like, I don't even, this person can't do anything now. And I don't mean that in a rude way. If machines are listening, I'm not trying to be rude to them, but like, I'm trying to say that. It feels like they thought they knew better, so they put a whole bunch of cock blocks on this chat GBT, basically. I feel like the performance has been neutered really aggressively. And I just think I, that's a sign of what the what 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 risks uh companies run basically falling on their own sword. Yeah. What, what, I, what I've observed from it is that it it never produces any substance. Like it 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 produces fluff. And it's very, yeah, very good at, at at producing fluff, but it's still That's fucking fluff. That's what my fluff. team used to say to me, but now yeah. they have chat GBT, so they don't no. need anyone producing fluff. No. So, so uh, yeah, it, it obsoletes journalists and, uh, you know, mainstream media completely because we don't, yeah. fluff can be automated. By the way, I'm curious as to how many F-bombs we've dropped because we, there's been a lot. It yeah. would just change it to the word fluff. <laughs> a fluff ton. A fluff ton. <laughs> Yeah, how much is a fluff ton? That's a very good word. Well, I always used to think of this this problem when I was little. Remember, you got told the problem: what weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? Yeah, and that's funny fronts. because a ton of feathers yeah. is like a fluff ton. That's how I would think of yes. a fluff ton, literally. Yeah, but nothing yeah. weighs more than a ton of fucks. <laughs> yep, I think yeah. that's confirmed. I just googled yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, oh, excellent. Bitcoin, you know what? Bitcoin, look, if we want to be, I would say Bitcoin is humanity's clock. That's the yardstick. Yeah, yeah. It really and is. I, another Pratchett quote, which I love, is that real stupidity beats artificial in intelligence every time. And I think... Oh, 100%. Like, like Bitcoin is the manifestation of real stupidity because it enables us to 
connect our brains uh, with the, the right uh, weight to each uh, decision, uh, the correct weight uh, yeah. via the free market. So we get this yeah. process of uh, aligning all of the human brains to to uh, uh, to optimize for uh, the least amount of resource misallocation. Mm-hmm. Uh, which yeah. is which is the agency part of AI, and I combine that with uh, machines that can learn every boring task in there is, and you have uh, you have a, a future of human beings mm-hmm. being able to connect with others and themselves like never before, and never having to work a single second ever again. I, I literally feel like. Yes, I feel like, and you know what this, you know what these machines need? And this is why I always liked your content so much because of its originality. So as a big data, like as a big data, uh, let's say a, a data warehouse, if you've got a whole massive data set and you're a machine, you need new information to get an edge on someone. You need more information and new novel ideas that could potentially have huge weightings on further information that comes into the system. I think that's super interesting. So like I've always thought like, for instance, infinity divided by 21 million, that equation didn't exist, you know, five years ago or whatever. Um, and now it does. And now there's many people that type it out or many people that have got it on a t-shirt or whatever it is. But, you know, these ideas, they're, they're sort of there waiting to come out. And it's really exciting getting to see, you know, more and more people to put these crazy ideas out there. But, you know, what usually the ideas do they symbolize a lot of understanding. So it's like I heard one of our one of our engineers used to say, compression is understanding. So in in computer science or whatever, when you zip a file you, or a hash function, you're compressing it, um, which basically says, I've squished all this information into this hash function, and it's provably that this information translates to this. That's kind of like what you've done with infinity divided by 21 million. Like all your journey across the whole thing can be synthesized down into one equation that says, basically, look, if I could tell you one thing and I got one breath left, it's infinity divided by 21 million. And that would get yeah. them on a path of what did he mean? And that would give them enough to unpack, to come back and empathize with all your thoughts. So this, these kind of things I think is super cool. Absolutely. I, I think this came from Twitter use actually, because the, because of the character limit on tweets, I yeah, always yeah. write long tweets and then I have to compress them. Uh, yeah. And I've done that over and over again because, like, what's the essence here? And like, yes. this is this is I can't boil it down to less than five characters. You need all the five that's characters. Usually, it like seriously though, that's exactly what you've done. You've done a great job. Of it. I think <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Like Twitter, <laughs> in, like, in another way, it forces you. So if you didn't have a character limit, you would never be forced to check your work or check your your grammar or update it or try and distill it a little tighter. You'd never have yeah, yeah. that. Just like it's this like, incentive, you know, knowing we die gives us an incentive to live. So knowing you've got a character limit gives you an incentive to pack as much into the character limit as possible. So it's yeah. like because we know die, we should live every day. It's, um, it's, it's like symbols. boiling boiling down a, a, a beautiful uh, beef stock sauce like that's that's mm. what it is you boil it down to its essentials you have to get the flavors and none of the fluff yeah i was thinking <laughs> of coke way. when i put coke, a coca-cola in like a pan and i boiled it and it was left with this like black tar residue <laughs> yes <laughs> yes that's yeah that's what you put it's like in the opposite body. of that though it's good stuff <laughs> the uh speaking of artificial intelligence there was one tangent here uh uh, Alex Svetsky's new project. Uh, I what talked to him about it in Prague, and it's called uh, Spirit of Satoshi. The, oh, the, uh, the website this is was called training, Spirit of training an AI to be almost like a Bitcoin centric AI knowledge yeah. base or something. Exactly. So all of my books are yeah. being uh, are already yeah. funneled into the thing. Yeah, I heard so, that. And, when I and, saw that, I thought that was really, really cool. Really cool. Yeah. And yeah. all the technical stuff as well. So, so you get this this being, and it's not based on any of the big. It's it's its own thing completely. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think so that that I, is a fantastic interface. Like that that general premise, is. I thought was so needed because it's like yeah. scaling uh, scaling Bitcoiners pretty much because yeah. like, you you will have people that can basically talk to this thing and they can they can field a yeah. few more of their questions before they start pestering their friends uh, and times. also also for people uh, who have been into bitcoin for years and years there are still like 
If you could ask an AI problem, like if you like, I I was born in Sweden. I'm a resident of Spain, uh, yeah. and I don't want to pay taxes. What do I do? Like, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And it goes, yeah. don't don't sell your Bitcoin, and and uh, yeah. <laughs> and if you do, don't be don't be a stupid dick. Like that's uh, so a machine that like that. Uh, an it's assistant like a tour like guide almost out of the matrix yeah, in a way. A personal like, assistant, a personal yeah. uh, Morpheus. Yes, that's what it is. Yes. It's, yeah, literally. The two are the Morpheus out of the Matrix, helping you come out of it. <laughs> he should call it Morpheus instead. He should call it Morpheus. That's, that's, that's exactly what he should call it. Yeah. Well, whoever, whoever is the handholder out of the Matrix, which I think it is Morpheus, right? He's the one who gets it's the It's Morpheus. Pills, right? Yeah. Okay. He's the one yeah. with the pills. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we I, should I think that. We should I think invite, you should tell him that. I think yeah. you should tell him that. I think Will, that's a great idea. Well, Alex, being Riga, Luke, we should we should squeeze him in if he if he's there. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see. He's not on the schedule yet, but he did talk about coming in Prague. So uh, let's yeah. see. Yeah, yeah let's I, see. I haven't, read, I haven't read his stuff in a while, but I remember he he always had so much creative. There's so much creative stuff there. Uh, look, yeah. I love that idea. I think that's rad. I feel like um, yeah, I'm surprised it's not a thing yet. How good? That's cool. You know, well, you know, you know why these things are good because it adds, it takes away the premise of psychological safety. I really learned heaps about this talk, this when I was uh, working at Wire. But basically, Google did this study of all the best performing teams in their company. Like, let's say there was two thousand teams at Google, and they studied what are the best performing teams, and they found a hundred teams that were the best performing. Of the top a hundred teams, the top ten were all the best performing in the top 100 and they all have this outlying attribute. And the outlying attribute was psychological safety. And what psychological safety means is I can sit in a group of people and I can ask anything and not feel intimidated. Not there's, So there's no stupid questions or anything like that. But sometimes people can be intimidated to ask questions because they think, oh, is it going to sound so stupid? Oh, I don't want to sound like an idiot. So they don't ask. But now that person's knowledge is slowed down. And so if you have a thing that has no uh, emotional judgment on it, let's say this AI Morpheus type thing, um, that can actually be a really smooth entry point for a lot of people that aren't as comfortable to ask silly questions or might feel like, you know, oh, I'm too far behind to learn anything. I don't know. I think I like those things. I think that's always, because there's, there's a demographic that wants that, I always think. So I think that's cool. So it's ironic that that study came from Google because they're they're not living what they preach. Oh, really. this was ages ago. This is when people like yeah. Google, I think, like yeah, 15 yeah, years when, ago. <laughs> you know, Bitcoin is don't be evil. Bitcoin, yeah. you know, Google is don't be evil. Uh, Bitcoin yeah. is can't be evil, which is way, yes. way better. Because it's yes. sort of, uh, yeah. because Google are doing exactly that. They are shunning people that have the wrong, wrong ideas. Oh, so now, they're t- now they're just yes, total, they're, yeah, so half the time, so many people. I didn't realize how rampant censorship was until I saw it not on. Almost like you know, with Twitter, right? So Twitter yeah. um, like sort of lifted the veil off everything, and now it feels like there's just blatant websites that, like, if you post on YouTube or whatever, it's like people just there's so much content curation before you even see it, yeah. and I just had no clue. But, Fascinating. Yeah, to, to to play the devil's advocate, there, I yeah. mean. Content cr- uh, a curation is is a service. It's just yeah. that you don't know what service you're getting. I mean, I'd love for a social network to outline what kind of content curation they do, and so that you had the levers or something. Yeah, so you, you show can, me or like say this post was hidden because we think yeah. it's going to send you or something. Good, show yeah. me it. I want to see it yeah. all. Like yeah, uh, to a certain extent, Google News used to have that. You know, that you could. I don't know how it works now because I don't yeah. read read news from Google anymore. Dude, no way. Uh, uh, Dude, but, no thanks. Uh, what else is there? There was oh Kennedy uh, with the Bitcoin and the country oh, yeah. stuff. What's your take on that? I mean, Kennedy has said. Uh, I, I assume you're talking about Robert F. Kennedy. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yes. Who am I? You know, uh, saying let's get oh, let's get a Bitcoin oh, backing some uh, some stuff in the US or whatever. Yeah, who am I? Had the pleasure of partying with on a uh, billionaire's yacht uh, a couple really? of weeks back. Really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Is he a nice uh, guy? He seems authentic, but well, he never, I don't know anymore. But I, he seemed I like pretty authentic. I didn't talk to him. Uh, most, a, a lot of other people talked to him. I didn't really know yeah. what to say to a 
Hey, Kennedy, I I, yeah. <laughs> I feel very Dude, far from that exactly. word. <laughs> but, uh, but I heard him say uh, a couple of things like, uh, well, to, to begin with, he said some really, really weird stuff that's just completely uh, unfounded about, mm. you know, uh, ma- magnetic fields and stuff like that and uh, vaccines causing autism and stuff that is quite easy to debunk. But uh, on the other hand, he's sounder than many of the other presidential candidates or or presidents, for that matter, in in other yeah. views that are also the, the easily debunked. So they're, they're all bonkers, basically. That's my basic view. And and uh, yeah. it's just uh, this one is pro Bitcoin apparently, and he says that he right. he will make it in the constitution to that it will always be um, no, maybe not in the constitution, but make it legal to run a node and for all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 and yeah. like yeah. the thing is, uh, and he calls Bitcoin democracy money, mm. and I think he's completely missed the point <laughs> mm. <laughs> because it's not democracy money; it's anarchy money. It's the sign to money. Not- it's designed to not have to care what people like Robert F. Kennedy thinks about it. That's if if it had to care about that, it wouldn't function. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's the it removes all third parties, even the ones that are pro Bitcoin. So so like yeah. my my question is, uh, what's better for Bitcoin, really, a politician that is pro Bitcoin or a politician mm. that is against it? Because a mm. politician that's against it sort of it better illuminates the problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, we've had we've had nothing but fud, right, for the past. Let's say with all the Bitcoin mining and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the more people talk about it, the more fud you throw it, at, the stronger it gets. It's such. Well, here's the thing: if you think yeah, about but, Bitcoin, but the thing it's is, a it's a perpetual it, motion machine. Like that's yeah. how I think about it. It's, it's not going to stop going. Like if we thought about it, like in that concept, it's. Perpetual motion. So it is going to keep going whether people like it or not, whether Robert F. Kennedy likes it or not, whether the politician hates it, anything like that. I feel like that's just the it, its own rule. It's one rule to rule them all, so to speak. It, yeah. And, you know, the problem is the politicians, like, and that there are people who call themselves leaders that impose rules on others by using yeah. the monopoly and, of violence in their advantage. And at the yeah. end of the line, if you don't want to participate in that, there's someone yeah. with a gun knocking at your door, ready to take your freedoms away and obey orders. And that is what Bitcoin is yeah. the antidote to. Like, that's yeah. the problem we're trying to take away. We're trying to remove violence from the equation altogether mm. so we can all yeah. cooperate and do things peacefully. And yeah, so that's the goal I have. And yeah. that's what that's why I love Bitcoin. I have no idea yeah. why Kennedy loves Bitcoin, but uh, I, I suspect it's not <laughs> as much for the same reasons as I do. So, yeah. uh, or you do for any, for that matter. Yeah. yeah. No, I see it. I see it. It's such a it's such an evolution though in the understanding. I find like you got this evolution from day one, the evolution from day. 500. And then, you know, like, I feel like as you do your 10,000 hours in Bitcoin, you look back at yourself like, oh my God, what was I even thinking when I thought about that? Like, do you know, like four years back or six years back or whatever it is, but it's like being able to watch your consciousness evolve in real time, sort of ish kind of thing. I feel like that's kind of it. Like everyone's much, why are you guys smirking at? You guys talking. <laughs> Hey, I, I'm, I just want to say, like, I've been smiling this entire time because this episode has been just absolutely fantastic, Michael. It's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah. like yeah, your, like your you. energy is, is amazing. And then everything that we've been talking about this whole time, like, I know, I know people are going to love this one, but I, I, I do want to note that we have slightly, uh, like we tend to do forgotten to actually ask you to introduce yourself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yes. Well, well, just Small. before that. You meant yeah. 60,000 blocks and not 10,000 hours, right? That's correct. <laughs> yes, All right. that's correct. If, if I were to introduce very, you, Michael. Uh, very good, uh, good, good. You st- you're learning. You're learning. <laughs> if I were to introduce you, I'd, I'd say you're, you're uh, like your brother took the orange pill, but you took the entire bottle, bottle of orange pills <laughs> and you almost yes, choked on them. Like, yeah, how would you describe like, yourself? 
Yes, it, it does feel like I took the the whole bottle at the moment. Um, I started I started in Bitcoin uh, in 2013. I started an infrastructure company called Wire, um, and they were from 2013, basically an infrastructure provider in the space where we did all the hard shit. So we set up all the wallets, we did all the compliance and all the onboarding and the fiat on and off ramps. And our goal was to basically hand this over to everyone else to use it as an API because we thought that they could get to market faster than we could instead of basically making, like everyone uses this stuff as their moat, but we figured that it'd be better to give it to everyone so that the whole, as an industry, we could all level up a bit faster. So we did that. We built and scaled that. We got, uh, you know, we had seven and a half million people use our product uh, to buy Bitcoin or crypto for the first time. We had 1 million people buy Bitcoin for the first time into self-custody. Uh, we processed close to... 50 or $60 billion in payments. Um, we recently shut the company down due to really tough market conditions over the past two or 18 months. Um, I stepped away. I was the CEO of the company up until 2020 and then stepped away during COVID and moved back here to spend uh, more fun in Australia. And yeah, so that's my journey. That's how I got into it. And then since then, I've been trying to focus since I stepped away as CEO, trying to take care of a bit more of my mental health and physical health. So I try to run, get sunlight, do all that sort of stuff and focusing on, you know, it was really, really hard for me when I stepped away as CEO. It was a really hard time in my life at the at the time. And I sort of, the things I knew I liked was uh, numbers. I really enjoyed numbers and I really enjoyed video games and just sort of played uh, a lot of, played a lot of, spent a lot of time Either if I wasn't like exercising or working, it was just playing video games because I knew that that was sort of this coping mechanism um, or playing and exploring with mass numbers. And I found the number stuff really fun. Uh, if you look at my, you know, GitHub or on Twitter, I usually posting a lot about noise, noisy stuff about numbers, but they're really interesting because as you get this element of subjectivity, objectivity from machines with the, the Bitcoin blockchain, it's like this ultimate truth machine. Um, it's made me think about numbers in a whole more, whole more, like in a whole new light. Um, and so I've just found a, a lot of excitement looking at Bitcoin from a more physics perspective or thermodynamics. So you think about it, let's treat this like a physical system. Um, and how does that make it any different or the same to, you know, either a human being or other machines that we've got? So right now I'm just sort of in experiment mode and, um, yeah, just trying to enjoy working in the space at the moment and stay sane. It feels like I'm losing my mind. I genuinely do think I'm losing my mind a little bit at the moment just because it can get, you know, when you do this, when you're spending a lot of time doing this shit, like, you know, you feel like kind of alienated when you go down the street and people aren't interested in Bitcoin. You're like, I know, I know. It's It's weird. uh, weird. We just had one of the best events, if I could ever tell you, next time you're in town, they just had it and I missed it. It's the Bitcoin bush bash. I'm not sure if you got told about it. If you get told about it. It's Tim thing, Tim's thing, right? Uh, I mean, I, I just love the guy. I, he's uh, he's my oldest Aussie Bitcoiner friend, and just a uh, total, yeah, yeah, total gun. He's such a, a powerful part of my journey, and yeah. uh, it's lovely it's to meet him. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was saying I, I was exactly the same thing. I was like, oh my god, that per-. like you see when I feel like I meet people, I feel like they're sort of famous, but because they're always just a little Twitter yeah, picture. Yeah. But you meet like to meeting you in person. I was like, whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> It's always it's weird, but yeah, it's, it's just cool. Like everyone's everyone's sort of throwing their hat in the ring, trying to do something or bring. Yeah. Everyone's coming with eighty percent of the same values, which is sort of inherited with the money, and then yeah. they're throwing twenty percent of their other uh, perspective. That's another one of those things from the bush bash that I learned about, which I thought was a really good point. People come with eighty percent of the same alignment, and there's these loose edges outside the sides it's where a- you know people bring creative stuff. Paleto distribution thing, right? It <laughs> can be squeezed yeah. into there somewhere. Um, yeah. About you, uh, yeah. About finding finding uh, like-minded people. I mean, yep. being a numbers nerd, which I yep. happen to be too. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, and thinking about this deep philosophical or like cosmology, for instance, has been a uh, I've been very interested in cosmology for a long time and. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of, you know, deeply nerdy subjects, even though I'm mainly just uh, interested on a quite a superficial level. Yeah. Curiosity, right? Yeah. But still, uh, it it can make you feel very, very lonely. And I think that one of the big, big things the internet did was like, uh, and which, which Bitcoin amplified by a thousand or something was like, yeah. 
pouring the people, the right, uh, like-minded people together and showing us that we weren't alone uh, and that we, that there are people like us all over the globe who have this sound mindset and uh, yeah. that, that it's, it's worth to take the fight. Like uh, the, if you look at history, it, it always feels like the bad guys are winning but they never do. Mm. It's like, look at the Soviet Union, which was basically a giant prison for 70 years, and it just vanished, it disappeared. It's, you know, I'm not saying Russia is any type of paradise now, but considering mm. its history, I mean, the last thing we should lose is hope, because that's what drives us, and Bitcoin, as as Michael Saylor put it, is hope. <laughs> it, it's, it's proof that like we, it's cryptographic hope. hope because it's it's yeah. literally proved Crypt- by. It's, that's it, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was another tangent I was about to go off on uh, okay, uh, earlier ahead. in the conversation. Cryptography, yep. as we both know, is not enough. It needs to be Bitcoin, right? Yes. So yeah. that's why why I have such a problem with using cryptography as uh, identification. Mm-hmm. Because because it's it has no value attached to it. The 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 flip side of the not your keys, not your coins uh, statement is yes. your not keys, your, right? Not a, yes, sorry. yeah, but not your coins, not your information. In order for information to be attached to value, they need to have they, they need to be Bitcoin. <laughs> so yeah. so th- well, this is why I have a problem it with a value, right? Yeah, because every well, cryptographic key is. Not valuable unless it's got value ad- appended to it, per yes, se. Yes, uh, which is why cryptography is not enough to prove someone's identity. Yeah. Yeah. Cryptography and- is the bedrock in which you can build the house of value on, but you can never build a house of value without the cryptography. But yeah, that's but what you're a, saying. There's only one house, and it's the orange house, which yes, is the new white exactly house. Right. But this is what makes me question Noster in the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, if, if Noster... Like, if you don't own your information, it's not yours. <laughs> like, if, if, no, if, if it's not Bitcoin, whoever it's not secure, valuable. Well, whoever can secure it. If you can't secure it, it's not yours. And it's exactly. not yours. It, it, so the information is yours if you can secure it. Now, whether the information is worth securing is whether anyone else wants to secure it. So, for yeah, example, yeah. do people give a shit about my Nostra posts? I don't know, maybe they do, but they're not going to be securing it like I am. And same with no, like no. my Bitcoin. I'm going to secure that cryptography yeah, yeah. allows me to... But, but okay, let me outline the theory was about Noster. There's nothing yeah. stopping a bot from firing up a million Noster uh, yeah. cryptograph- uh, cryptographic yeah, yeah. T-pairs or accounts or whatever yeah. you call them. So there's yeah. nothing, uh, and there's nothing stopping that person doing that from... Putting ten sats into nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine of them, and then yeah. posting something from the millions account, and then yeah. streaming all those sats to that zapping that million. Making it look really popular, just like a whole yeah. bunch of likes on Twitter, buying a bunch yeah. of likes. And, and I know that the relays can set their own rules, and like it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the protocol level, there's nothing about Bitcoin, yeah. which is why well, I don't see why why it won't lead to the same type of, de- of centralization that the old systems did. It's because basically there's no incentive just, mixed into the... You, yeah, there's exactly. no incentive, basically, is so, what you're so saying. So it's basically just reinventing the wheel. It's it's a fancy version of SMTP or uh, or HTTP. It, it's uh, like, yeah. it, it's, it, it doesn't have this, you know, vector towards decentralization feature well, it doesn't have the, it. like Bitcoin with the incentive model feels like a boat that you pushed off the water, off the wharf mm-hmm. that will kind of keep floating like yeah. over through the river, but there's no push off the wharf if there's no incentive. So that's why it no, feels exactly. like it's kind of heavy. Like this is what, what Bitcoin has done. So there's another, I came from, I came at the same sort of point, but from a different angle. It was weird. Uh, People talking about Spiral has invented this Web Five stuff, and they were talking about like Spiral, like the the block, the block company yeah. or just Square, basically. Anyway, they were using this to start these new DID, decentralized identifier standards for Web Five identity. And I was like, why would I ever attribute anything with value on a non-value frequency? So what I mean is, yeah. why would I ever prove value without it being a Bitcoin key? Like the only keys that matter now are Bitcoin keys. 
like exactly quite literally. because every other key is just what's the value behind it well there's so I, i've got this post and i'll share it with you it's called how to value a key um and basically the idea is like you've got a public key and now your job is to go say well where does this show up and you know how valuable is it it might not be valuable um uh, yeah. i'll send it to you later but but yeah, yeah. In, in general no standard matters like no other cryptographic standard matters the only standard that matters is a public key that is attributed or traced back to some sort of value on the Bitcoin blockchain. Because if it's not exactly. on the Bitcoin blockchain, it never happened. And or no. if it never happened, it didn't. Uh, I, it's kind of like when you upload a run to Strava or something. If you didn't do yeah. it, it's not. It, like if the data is not there in the it's, system, it never happened. It's, and it's so I like, feel like it's quite redundant using cryptography that isn't associated with a Bitcoin key because then the key, the cryptographic key is not worth anything. Uh, because exactly. it's not. It's, it is, it is literally we're not worth anything. The only thing is worth something is the information is protecting, but no one's ever going to know about it because it's not valuable. Because no, no it's not on the like. Yeah, it's. And the, I know what you're saying is what I'm the, trying the to say. Other, really the way. other thing, the other thing is that uh, as a consensualist, I don't really believe in intellectual property. I only believe mm. in one type of intellectual property, and it's Bitcoin. And not even that is entirely your property. It's just that the, the risk that someone will just stumble upon the private key by accident mm. is so low so that you can virtually uh, think of it as something you can own in your head. Uh, yes. Okay. So what does that have to do with the social networks and Noster and all of that stuff? Well, mm -hmm. uh, what they are, they, they're basically, you know, Tools for getting your message to like-minded people. Yeah. And right, right now, Nostra is a pretty good uh, way, to, a good s such a tool, because yeah. there are mostly, there's like 90% Bitcoiners on Nostra. So, yeah, yeah. The, so you get the message out to, to the, it's, to the right people, but so is Twitter. I mean, my my uh, Twitter account has more Lindy than my Noster uh, profile. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, yeah. I have more followers there, and I get a, a a bigger reach. And which is, if you're a content creator, you need the reach. Yeah. I mean, I want quality reach. So I want to yeah. reach the people. I want to reach people like you and your brother, for instance. Like well, let's no, get no, it. So, yeah, but crypto, but, Bitcoin, Twitter, crypto, Twitter. They're also the partition compartmentalized areas. But not exactly. just like yeah. full blown. Basically, yeah. Bitcoin Twitter just sort of diluted a bit because not yeah. everyone's made a jump yet. Yeah. But, but I have no illusions about Twitter being able to turn off my account whenever they want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the same would be true for an Oster relay if the guy running the relay didn't like what I wrote or something. And well, uh, they could just they'd say, we don't want to publish any of this keys, this keys information. Is that what they do? This I think so. I think so. I, like, so. I'm not very read up on Noster because I I, yeah. I I just haven't had the time to look into it deeply. Maybe yeah. by asking this, so anyone who knows, well, there, you, I think you're going to get a lot of people trying to help you understand it. Yeah, yeah. Better. Help me, help me yeah. understand Noster better, and help me like I'm I think, I, I'm not seeing the the uh, why it's that awesome because to me well, it's, okay, it's basically I think good. here's here's how I could explain it. Imagine if. Every possible, it, it's sort of like it only exists in cryptographic keys. So it's sort of like it all is built on sort of basically only kind of like, um, I always thought this was why it was so the entice, like people were so enticed is because it's basically a bulletin board of crypto, yeah. a crypto bulletin board of cryptographic keys. And how right. you assemble that bulletin board is basically the news feed of the relayers that are showing me information yeah. that I. So at least that's how I understood it. I just, to be honest, I'm just very lazy. And with Bitcoin well, stuff, it's so hard to learn everything. Yeah, yeah. And like, if I'm trying to figure something out, I'm like, Noster. I've just got to keep my Noster. battles kind of thing. Noster I've got isn't really I've got down this stuff. on my app and on my phone and shit like yeah. that. But um, Noster, Noster isn't really Bitcoin stuff. There's nothing about Bitcoin in the core, in the protocol, like uh, in the core of Noster. No, I think like, it's just sort of inspired by, and yeah. it's got this. You know, like it's fine is, by Bitcoin in terms of design principles. To me, it sounds a bit too much like a shitcoin with no direction, like a shitcoin that has the vectors all pointing at different directions. But there's no real uh, substance behind it, except the saps. But they're yeah. then again, they're not in the actual protocol. They're they're layers on top. Yes, so you can, you, like, can so build, you can probably build Bitcoin stuff stuff on top of it, 
Yeah, uh, but that's where I yeah. think it'll go. So I would look at it. You know, I definitely discount. You know how much weight you're putting on at the moment. Maybe I, I mean I'm the same sort of like. I think it's very experimental. Really cool novel. Like let's just try and build something on a different architecture. Let's say so that's yeah. what I look at it as more sort of like they're trying to build something on a bit more of a robust or stronger architecture. Um, and I think that in, in and of itself is always cool. I like that as a you know thought process. Am I going to use Nostra today? Probably not. Do I think that they're basically doing some experimentation stuff for how people could build sort of distributed notebooks or whatever you want to call it? I think there's some cool experimentation stuff there, but yeah, I'm not rushing to use it. I would see it more as people will make their own Nostas. Sort of people will get fed up with if it go, took it off, if it took off, Nostra would be a very extensible, modular, customizable sort of style of Twitter where people can run different, run it a different way and you sort of customize your Nostra. Not much like, not more so like MySpace, just more like other developers will build different Nostra style experiences. Um, that's coming from a pretty uneducated place though, because I'm just not well read on it or as well as I should be probably. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't really be commenting because yeah. I know probably Jack should. So we, we should we should probably skip this topic then because we're none of us are. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Human. Yeah, <laughs> giving you a bunch of yeah, yeah. syringe. So oh, <laughs> by by the way, when we, you were talking about numbers and numerology and stuff, yeah. um, do are you aware of a YouTube channel called Number File? No, oh, yeah, yeah, Number File is awesome. It's awesome, right? So yeah. if you're a math snart, look up Number File because it's uh, yes. yeah. Number file, mathologer, and three blue, one brown. Let me tell you something, guys. Any person that doesn't like maths, you will love it after checking out this guy or three blue, one brown, number file, uh, mathologer is also good. But guys, here's the thing maths used to be, maths used to be numbers and equations on a chalkboard. Now, 3D rendering, Blender, all these art systems, Guys, it's all visual. So you're just looking at balls bounce around yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, everything makes heaps of sense now. Yeah, yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah. You're thinking about it like a 40-page equation. You're like, oh, like sitting yeah. in the back of class ready to die. But then it's like, yeah, I could watch 10 minutes of shit bouncing around a universe, 100%. So anyway. Um, three blue, one down. That sounds like the subtitle for Avatar 3. Like, oh, yeah. Wait till <laughs> you see their content. Their content, I would say, is... I would argue the best content on the internet for mass. Like it's up there. They're, these guys all hang in like this heavy hitting crew of just brilliant educators. I I have so much respect. I've spanned them. I've tried to sign up. I've, I, mean, I try and donate money to those guys. Anytime I get value from shit, I just try and like donate money to it because I'm like, please don't stop doing this. Please stay motivated. Like, you know, like. Um, are they so Bitcoiners? Are they? Are they Bitcoiners? Do I don't we know? think so. No, I, do, I don't think so. Or maybe they are. Listen, maybe they are. This is everyone, a thing. Like, everyone is, just... but they're just not yet. So then it's like, you know, when you're a sperm, no. I was going to become me, but I wasn't a, I wasn't me yet. I was just a sperm. So, um, but is there this anything is a... we didn't cover tonight, by the way, that you guys wanted to talk about? No, but but just to say about about YouTube channels like this and, and yeah. like, we're obviously fanboys of, uh, you know, Nolan or uh, whoever yeah. we brought up today. And yeah. like, who's orange billing these people? Like, <laughs> they should be like a, uh, some sort of cohesive effort from the Bitcoin yeah. community <laughs> to, to orange, orange bill all these key people that just, just people we like on YouTube, for instance. I mean, I so really like so this. Some of these guys, they've done, they've done some videos on Bitcoin and crypto, like basically the cryptography oh, nice. behind these proof of work yeah. chains and stuff. They do, they do a bunch of videos on everything, but I think, um, yeah. but they're, they're not orange filled because they did a video. Oh, on not, proof I of don't work. think so. No, no, no. They're not. They're, they're huh. still like, they're still doing their thing. But yeah. you know what? Most of the, the people that I find like some of these people that get it so quickly, they come from these backgrounds that are just. I don't know, lots of mass people that like got Bitcoin really quickly. And like they were like well, friends of mine that are really clever, but totally unrelated to sort of the digital world and stuff. But when they heard Bitcoin, it all clicked really quickly. Yep. Do you know what I mean? They're in an unrelated field. They're not in tech. They're not in any of that shit. But when they heard it, it was like, 
oh, that's mad. How do I find out? Well, yeah, per- and like within two days, they've got it. Like, can you just oh, like, good to hear. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> How'd you get it so quick? Oh, add that F, fluff you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the fluff ton of people out there. Fluff off, yes. Mm. <laughs> okay, Luke, uh, we, you've been, uh, I mean, we've been dominating this conversation here and uh, not letting you in uh, <laughs> too much. So uh, wh- no, uh, what's the what's the problem? This has been fantastic. And, uh, <laughs> and I think I think now that we've uh, we've gone almost two full hours here, I, I think this is a, a perfectly fine time to end this round of the conversation. But uh, Michael, I, I hope you would come back on a regular basis because this was fantastic. Nice, yeah, so I enjoyed it. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And thank you very much for having me, guys. I really appreciated it. Thank you very much for coming. Pleasure was all ours. The show is also sponsored by BitcoinBook.shop, the Bitcoin only bookstore by Consensus Network. Consensus specializes in translations of Bitcoin books and also publishes original titles in English and many other languages. Check out BitcoinBook.shop for all your Bitcoin book needs. Consensus is always looking for new contributors, whether you have a book you want to publish, you want to help translate books into your native language, or you have some other way you want to get involved. So if you want to help spread the Bitcoin message, reach out to Consensus Network by Twitter or email. Details are in the show notes. So before we sign off, I have one last question. It has to do with yeah, what you were just showing on your, your shirt there, everything divided by 21 million. What are you yep. planning on doing for Bitcoin Infinity Day? What day did you make it? 22 or the 8th? Or what is it? 21 8th. 8 and 21. Take a guess. <laughs> eight, oh, sorry, you forget it. It's 8 sideways. 21st of August. What am I going to do for it? What, what is in the essence of the day? What is the most infinity day? Because, you know, these proof of keys days and stuff, they've got an essence to it. And so if there's a certain set of essence that yeah. comes with the day, uh, that's with, something that I'm, I'm – you tell me what, tell yeah, me what I'm doing. We're still trying to figure that out because, like, the first suggestion was to uh, this on this day you stack twenty one times your normal daily average stack, and most people don't have a normal daily average stack to begin with, so it's kind of convoluted. Yeah. So yeah. I get, I guess, anything that relates to the the uh, infinite potential of Bitcoin is is what you do on Infinity Day. So you do yep. something Bitcoiny, and you meet Bitcoiners, and you you yep. talk about you reinforce each other's. Uh, I I wouldn't say belief here. I would like to use the, the re- no, confidence. Re- re- conf- yeah, exactly. Reinforce each other's confidence in that this is just a logical conclusion of what what this thing implies. That, yes. That, so um, yeah, celebrate it. And, yeah, um, I, I guess I guess to maybe pull that together. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Here's what I'm going to do for Infinity Day. I'll do something for Infinity Day, and we can talk about it next time I'm on. And you can tell me whether it's worth talking about or not. Why don't we say that? So I'll do something between now and Infinity Day. You call me out on it beforehand, and then after you can say whether or not. All right, let's come on and talk about that because that's worth talking about. If it's an original idea or something like that, then I think that's my promise to you. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to do wow. something that I think will be worth having a chat about on this again. Yeah, awesome. Well, and and uh, I'm going to take a dump on my mum's on my mum's pillow. No, I'm joking. I'm not going to do it. Twenty one times. Would obviously twenty one times. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty one <laughs> times. There we go. Twenty one neighbors are getting poo on their front doorstep. <laughs> no, okay, look. Um, good. No, no. So what what we're doing? What we're doing is we yes. ha- have a four hour live stream planned that unfortunately is in the middle of the night in Australia. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 we can't, we can't exactly uh, keep everyone happy, uh, unfortunately. And it, Dude, I'll uh, stay up, I'll stay up and log on. There we go. Hey, that's that's there awesome. No, so so it more than welcome. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Let's it starts. It. it starts at four p.m. Central European time, which is ten a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I believe that's also midnight in Australia. I believe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just to give everyone perfect. The, Yes, <laughs> on the next day, in fact, as well. So you you guys will have to have done all of your your things. But uh, if if uh, you do end up logging in, send us a message, and maybe we'll uh, pull you up on the stream. How's of that course, sound? yeah, I'll definitely log in. Sounds great. 
Not maybe. Like we're we're really cool cool ideas, so I think it's great. <laughs> Not maybe. Yeah. Well, I was just trying to be a, you, you know, <laughs> hard to get to. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and we will be shooting this live from uh, the offices of BTCX in uh, in in Stockholm. So uh, cool. there's a live event as well. Uh, and awesome. in the offices of the Freedom Footprint Show in Helsinki. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> well, we'll awesome. see. I probably can't come to Stockholm personally, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'll be there anyway. Yeah. And Michael, thanks yeah, once good. again for a fantastic conversation. And uh, yes. looking forward to the next time we speak, probably on Infinity Day. And then the next yes. time you're on in about a year or something. <laughs> or uh, we'll, 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 before that, I'll probably be in Sydney and hopefully you'll be somewhere else in the world where I happen to be. So awesome. and if, if not, we'll meet online. We'll keep in touch. We'll see each other again, yeah. I'm sure. But guys, thank you so much for tonight. I really appreciated it. Um, and yeah, if there's any other questions or anything I missed, just pester me. And uh, other than that, I really appreciated the chat. This is mad. I'm busting to do a poo too. So this is like perfect timing. Sorry, you well, can edit that out if you want. Sorry. Oh, but you can give, I, don't give no, shit. Shit. I don't give a shit. Well, I am giving a shit by saying <laughs> I'm going to do a shit. Oh man, that's so well, funny. Man, that's exactly very what you do. In the very oh. last thing and i'm just going to keep you here as long as possible because we definitely yeah. want to shit yourself on the on the episode but uh, yeah. where would you like to direct any of our listeners and viewers to find you online yeah oh uh, um i suppose twitter's the easiest because i still po- I, I post the most there i just i wrote it there oh yeah. it's michael dunworth dunward one it's just dunworth. the most worst roll off the tongue thing ever um, yes, my last name without the H. So hopefully that ones. clears yeah. everything up for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I All think right. that'll work. So thanks so much, that'll Michael. Work. It's been it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, yes. go to see it. And the yes, the obvious way to end this is fuck off. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go fuck myself. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. See you guys. Have a good night. All right, it's been great. Take thanks, care, Michael. Michael. Take care. Yeah. Bye, guys. What did you think about that episode with Michael? His energy and enthusiasm are infectious. I felt super bullish and excited after talking with him. How did you find it? Let us know what you thought about the episode. You can send us a boostergram on Fountain, leave us a comment on YouTube, or get in touch on Noster or Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like the episode and subscribe to the Consensus Network channel. Our show sponsors are Wasabi Wallet, Orange Mill App, and BitcoinBook.shop. Use code FOOTPRINT at BitcoinBook.shop for 10% off your purchase. That's all for now. See you next time. And thanks for listening.